um, that they will hold a nominating convention. And Carmani says, I have enough of a paper trail with complaints to the attorney general and complaints to the election commission that if anyone challenges us, it's going to be thrown out because we have made every attempt possible to hold a primary this year. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. Hi, I'm Clint Webb, and I'm running for Senate. I have a short cropped haircut, a pretty enough yet accessible looking wife, and a newborn baby that I've dressed in a suit to prove to you that I mean business. For the last 15 years, I've lived my life in such a bland, uncontroversial, and repressed manner that it's almost unnatural. Why? Because I've been preparing to be your representative since I was a child. Most well-adjusted sane men would be hesitant to take a job where their decisions would so drastically affect the lives of so many. But not me. I possess a sort of sociopathic narcissism that makes me think that I should be in charge of everyone. But all of that needs to start here at home, in this beautiful state that I've grown to love since I moved here 18 months ago. Together, we can piggyback some of our state's legitimate needs onto my unquenchable lust for self-glorification. And that's a promise. All you have to do is dial in toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And, of course, you can join us on Skype. We've got Skype username lrn.fm. Just send us a contact request, and it'll be accepted. Then you'll be on our contact list. be easy for you to connect with us via Skype from that point forward. Uh, with you in the studio tonight, it is Ian. And Mark. And Mark, we've got extra people in the studio background here this yeah, evening. Yeah, we had a little homeschool group come. Earth Homeschool uh, in Keene, New Hampshire, contacted me, wanted to, to visit the studios. And I guess there was a bout of sickness, so it's fewer people than we expected. But, uh, you know, my son Jack actually is part of this homeschool group. Mm-hmm. And uh, when they contacted me, he was uh, he was down with his mother in Florida. But uh, he's here for the event, and it's it's kind of nice to have a little homeschool group seeing what it's like to do a radio program, which is a little underwhelming. Um, but nonetheless, <laughs> they seem interested. Yeah, yeah. So. There's boxes that blink. They have we have lights and uh, um, you know camera. That's a really about it. It's not that fancy. So let's jump right into you and your calls and thoughts. I know TSA George has been trying to call for the last few nights. He called Saturday night. and was just too busy. We weren't able to get him in. Uh, so right out the gate here, TSA George calling from D.C., the D.C. area. You're on Free Talk Live. Well, Ian and Mark, the, not so right there, it's about the whole TSA part of my name. Uh, that's no longer true anymore. Oh, wow. Well, you've been TSA George yeah, for as I long fi- as we've I fi- known you. I finally I finally threw in the towel. Really? So you don't want one. to go to to retirement? I mean, you probably only had like a decade uh, left. No, uh, th- that would be like it's thirty years for oh, it's thirty uh, uh, us unarmed bureaucrats. I had to have a gun set to me to retire in twenty years. <laughs> so what was there? Was there a last straw? I mean, you're you're a liberty oriented guy who'd been uh, who'd been working for the TSA, and there've been some really interesting stories that you told us over the years, and kind of the you know giving us the inside scoop yeah. on what it's what it's like to uh, you know to work for the TSA. What happened? It was a combination of last straw, getting sick of it, and psychopathic management and rule, and just constant rule changes. I mean, our rule book, as I told you before, is pretty much written in pencil and stuff. Mm. Like basically, basically, what happened? Like I guess the final straw was um, is like me and a, and a partner and I we were screening a flight. And uh, at the gate, right, we were doing a, was what we call a hot flight when a person of interest is going to be on the flight. You know, they sent a team out there to screen it. Right. And, they did um, that to me a few times. About- <laughs> Ian, Ian knows all about these hot flights. Yeah, <laughs> I imagine so. Yeah. Anyway, um, one guy, one old guy, like de- definitely looked at over seventy five, set off the our little machine to tell you know, explosive tracing like that. The, the the lady was running. 
Hmm. And uh, since there was talk of, you know, SOB changes anyway, we thought it, we already, they were already implemented because I had just got back from a little trip. And, um, and then I thought they were, we all thought they were in place. It was like, well, this is her, her thing. So we screened the guy, you know, it's like he was supposed to get like a, a the new SLP thing was supposed to be the older people get a lesser, less invasive screening method. Right, they uh-huh. don't take their shoes off and stuff. Well, it turned out that, the, that it was not supposed to go into effect yet at the time that we did it. So management is like management got wind of it before we, you know, flight finished boarding, and they go and dump the whole plane. Literally. Really? So they because, they took all you didn't the, take the guys' shoes off. Yeah, well, yeah, basically, yeah, it's like, uh, no, it's like, that's not till like, a few weeks from now, something like that, anyway. Um, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, they dumped the whole plane, rescreened everybody on the flight. Thank God it was just a little 50-seat puddle hopper, but wow. still, you know. And and management, all of, you know, the upper management was, like, all, you know, apocalyptic and all that other stuff and just giving us hell. And that, you know, hmm. between that and watching one of my, some of my coworkers taking lick, taking um, formula from a from a toddler because well the kid is not an infant. It's like it's still in diapers. Hmm. And so it was like that was, it was like that was it, you know. <laughs> but, but, how did you how did you quit? Know, I mean, how did you go about uh, you know going through the what is there a process? Did you just tell them you quit or did you give them two weeks? How did you go well, about it's that? A, it's, it's a bit of, of a process um, that and. Um, also, like you know, they were pro- they were probably gonna punish the whole team anyway, and that's just like, you know, and I just didn't want that on my job record, you know, another mm. you know, another you know, punishment, suspension or whatever. So, so what now? Just, what are you, like, you doing now? I mean, now that you're uh, you're done, how how long have you been free and clear of them, and uh, and what's your plan? A couple of weeks here, and um, what I'm doing now is working for a company that you two were talking about on Friday night. Really. And, uh, a little hint. Um, yeah, it's a little ride sharing thing. I'm pretty oh, sure you're familiar. Uber. Uber. Yep. That's cool. what I'm doing. So you're a driver. In so the meantime. Uh, that's very cool. Now, what, one of the things we didn't know about Uber, this is the kind of the ride share slash driver for hire uh, setup service, where, which, which exists in, <laughs> in certain cities. So uh, what is it like to be a driver for Uber? What are some of the things that you have to do to qualify for that? Because they're not just going to let anybody in, right? Oh no! You have to have well a, a clean criminal record, mm-hmm. and um, no. And um, as far as the driving record goes, no more than three moving violations within the last three years. Mm-hmm. Right there, as long as long as you got the clean record and no more than three moving violations in the last three years, and those moving violations are you know the kind that you're gonna you can just pay off without going to court kind of thing, then they'll let you mm-hmm. drive for them. And what about the so car you that you drive? Because I, I understood that Uber was only certain types of cars, but then they introduced some sort of other service that expanded. Do you know anything about yeah, that? Yeah, it has to have four doors, so yes, I had to trade in the Mustang. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I wondered about and that. Would you have those... I, uh... I, had, I, I, had to tell, I had to say goodbye to Vera and, <laughs> and, and get this little um kia forte because basically i figure if i'm going to drive for these guys and put a ton of miles on i want a car that already comes with a hundred thousand mile warranty because i'm probably gonna go through that you know in just over two years probably so how do you i mean with uber kind of the idea is that you the customer selects their location on a map and then there may be people who are in the area who are willing to give that person a ride and they could respond to it how do you decide where you hang out Do you kind of hang out near the airport like busy places like that clubs I mean, where, where's where's well, a good the, location? Well, the most lucrative places, at least in the D.C. area, are one downtown D.C. Obviously, in Arlington, that's where they get the most. That's where you really make the most money. However, also I like to hang out sometimes at the college campuses because I know you know college students are all you know tend to be into Uber and all advanced technologies. Plus, you meet a lot the prettiest ladies you know working, you working at college campuses and stuff like that. I mean, I have never had more beautiful women in my car <laughs> ever since I started driving for Uber. <laughs> so cool. So it sounds like you're having fun with it. And what's the, I mean, how's the money compare? Obviously, government money is big, big money and the benefits are good. So, like, how are you doing as well, far I mean, as money? The be- well, the government money thing, I mean, I was only making just over 40 grand a year, mm-hmm. you know, here. And that's because I've been there that long. That's why I make pretty much what a lead pay makes. Um, even though I was a regular screener. And really the only benefit that I ever really took advantage of was the paid vacations and sick leave. Mm-hmm. That's it. And I, for, well, I mean, I guess part of the uh, – I guess the health care part, you know, I guess now i got to find something else on that. 
but so um, I mean, so with Uber, uh, so you're getting paid on the like Uber cuts you s- some money, I presume, but also you're getting tips. Oh yeah, yeah. No, I, well, the, w- one guy offered tips, you know, but it's like you're not supposed to like you know you, you get, you're supposed to tell them that tips are not necessary, and I do that. And one guy insisted, and I was like, okay, I'll take a tip so, right there. Wow, I, I didn't, I didn't know that about Uber. You're saying the tip necessary. You're saying and they t- insist, then I get tip. So I you're saying tipping is built into the price on on Uber. Well, the, I, I get eighty percent of the whole fare. So if I get uh, uh, so if I get a hundred hundred dollar thing, I get I keep eighty dollars of it. You know, if it's a hundred dollar fare, for example. Cool, man. Well, I'm excited so that, about about that for you. It sounds like it's a great change. It sounds like you're gonna meet a lot of interesting people and not have to shake them down this time. So uh, and, very cool. yes, I'll be coming up to yeah. Pork Fest. If I'm you just get tired tr- of it, you could just time. you can just pull them out of the car and uh, grope them right there. I mean, <laughs> if if you miss the old job. <laughs> Oh, God, I'm done with the groping. I hated the groping. That's why I went to Playbook for the longest time. That's the whole Gates team right there, because I really, really hated the whole groping thing. And George, be sure I'm, you call I'm us with, a, with, with some good I... Uber stories as you develop them over time. And thanks for the call tonight. Congrats on getting out of the bureaucracy. Yeah. We'll see you this summer at the Porcupine Freedom Festival. Thanks for, for yeah. making the call tonight. T- uh, formerly known as TSA George, I guess he'll be either Uber George, George. or just George mm-hmm. from this point on. More coming up here. You can take control. 855-450 free. This is Free Talk Live. I want to share something important that will not only improve your life, but the lives of many others as well. And all you need to do is drink coffee. I'm not talking about harmful store-bought or chain coffee. No, this is truly the best of the best coffee. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer BuzzBox. With every purchase, 10% goes towards our efforts to give the gift of human freedom by providing at least 100 microfinance loans via World Vision. So literally, just one cup at a time, you're having an impact in helping make a difference in the world and one sip will have you buzzing the family and friends to prove just how good it is we're giving a free pound of coffee to everyone in the audience all you do is cover shipping go to coffee.freetalklive.com buzzbox coffee is organic so it contains no pesticides or toxins it's shade grown so less acidity and no heartburn it's top one percent arabica grade and gives people the opportunity to own their own coffee farms join us in making a huge impact at coffee.freetalklive.com Amanda Bolsold here from Midas Resources. Today, March 17th, 2014, gold opened at 1378.20. A one ounce gold coin can be purchased for 1427.79, 713.89 for a half ounce, or 356.95 for a quarter ounce. Again, that's 1427.79, 713.89, and 356.95. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. Have you ever wondered why banks, stockbrokers, investment advisors won't talk about gold IRAs? Wait a sec. Gold and silver is going up while Congress is trying to settle on the next debt increase. And there's no end to this madness. That old 401k and IRA can be converted into physical gold without tax consequences. I explain this in my book, 10 Reasons to Buy Gold. Don't let time slip away. Call for your free copy today, 800-686-2237. Get away from that Washington spin and get honest answers about gold. 800-686-2237. The book is free, 800-686-2237. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. Immigrating to the Shire was easy. I was instantly plugged into a community of individuals who also care about peace, liberty, and justice and are willing to do something about it. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here. And I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. 
My name is Jacob Hornberger. I'm president of the Future of Freedom Foundation, which Congressman Ron Paul awarded for having an outstanding freedom website. Write us at FFF at FFF.org, and we'll send you a free three-month subscription to our monthly journal of libertarian essays and our booklet, Economic Liberty in the Constitution, which George Mason University economics professor Walter Williams praised in a recent column. That's FFF at FFF.org. You can interact with other LRN listeners in our message board at forum.lrn.fm. That's forum.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Bring up anything toll-free, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And you can join us on Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. And don't forget, you can join us online as well at freetalklive.com. We've got all kinds of features on our site. And unlike those other talk shows in the business, those big-name shows, we don't charge you for our website. You can go and you can enjoy features like you'll find on those other sites, but you'll find ours are free. The webcam is there. You can go watch and listen to the show. Plus, the chat room is built into the same page as the cam. Just go to cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam freetalklive.com it is free so there's a daily web comic that's liberty oriented it's called quantum vibe and it's it's in the future where the people are colonized the moon and mars and vesta and there's even some sort of floating metal colonies sort of satellite colonies uh, circling the earth some of them are very statist some of them are quite free. It's amazing to uh, to to see the the interactions between these different places, the corporate intrigue, the uh, the governmental stuff going on. So go check out Quantum Vibe at uh, BigHeadPress.com. That's where you can see all of the stuff uh, from you know all the c cartoons that they put out at BigHeadPress.com, and you just scroll through, take a look. It's all free. Quantum Vibes updated daily. And I can't believe this, is that an artist can keep pace with this. QuantumVibe.com. All right, let's go uh, to the phones and your calls and thoughts. Still to come here tonight, a cannabis patient is cancer-free, and you might be amazed to know how old the person is. Uh, we'll go first, though, to Corby. He's in Texas listening online. Hello, Corby. You're on Free Talk Live. Hey, thanks for letting me talk. Um... I missed the Texas Bitcoin Festival, even though I live in Houston. It would have been a short trip, but I didn't listen to Free Talk Live enough, so mm. I wasn't informed. But just to give your users a quick heads up, I had emailed Ian a couple of days ago and uh, asked him about my site, bitwhistle.com, and it monitors the price of Bitcoins, and you can set it to send you email alerts. The email alerts will be ready in a day or two, but anyway. Um, and Ian's response to me was he was more interested in Bitcoin for the long run, and my rebuttal to that was even if you are in it for the long run, you might want to buy at the lowest price possible, so it may not be that you're only interested in selling. You might want to also get an alert, oh, the price went below 600, I can buy 0.1 more coins or a little bit, you know, whatever you're interested in buying. But, you know, there's, there's more to it than just selling, you know, in panic, but you could also use it to buy more, to also, you know, to stabilize Bitcoin or just to add to your savings or whatever you choose to. So it's kind of like a stock stop, um, you know, you, if you right. knowing, knowing the price, because right now I haven't seen any of these uh, these marketplaces in the Bitcoin sphere that are uh, that mature enough to be able to put in stops and things like that, uh, sort of stuff that's uh, available on the um, the regular market for Stocks and that sort now, of thing. Now, what's a stop? Is that where it reaches a certain price and well, you either sell or buy? Well, you would uh, basically a stop would be a sell, um, okay. as, as I understand it. So, if for instance you put Bitcoin as a six hundred dollar stop, if for what, has that. Do they? Yeah. Okay. Um, they have very, very, very little of the Bitcoin market. I'm, it surprises me that an exchange that has has a feature that uh, the rest of the exchanges don't have um, has 0.1 or 0.01, I can't remember what it is, percent of the, the business. I'm, I'm surprised at that. Yeah. So, BitWhistle, um, when I went there, it actually didn't pull up the actual website. You apparently have to put W's in front of it, Corby. Is that right? Yeah, I'm sorry. It's www.bitwhistle.com. I'll try to point that. The other, the, without the WWW, I apologize. You're right there. 
Cool. I so, do have one last thing yeah. that I was planning on doing with the site is creating a thing called a bit theory. But I tell you one to test to see is the price lower on Tuesday morning compared to Friday evening when people get paid more on Friday or, you know, or the first and 15th, et cetera. Hmm. You know, I was going to set up these little like practice accounts where you could set up kind of an automated either buy or sell and someday possibly even with real money, as you were mentioning, you know, to do stops or, you know, other things. But basically you could create a leaderboard where people have the best theories of, okay, you know, we think the price drops when, after the 15th, people get paid. After that, the price goes up. Mm. So you would know to buy it before that or other – whatever the you know, community could come up with. But those are some things that I was going to do with it. But anyway, hey, I wanted to call and – Innovation. I like it, Corby. Thanks for the call tonight. I, I appreciate it. Yes. I one last question, if you don't mind, or sure. one last point. You guys were kind of bad-mouthing Mexico, and I realized the uh, – What? A lot of the border towns – What are you talking Mexico, about? Mexico. When would uh, I th- Sunday, I heard you, you know, we're kind of talking about Mexico being a third world nation, kind of like Somalia and some other places, it seemed like. And you said that and was my on mom Sunday? Lives in Mexico and on the Sunday show, I heard some things that were kind of criticizing how Mexico was kind of a dangerous place. And it may be in parts, but it's actually in some places. Uh, yeah, Mexico is actually freer, though, in a lot of things because almost everything there is legal or a small. You know, a small bribe will get you out of almost all trouble. Mm-hmm. But, but there's not enough bureaucrats that are bored that they have here. So in a lot of ways, you're freer there because they don't have the money and the resources. Yeah, I've heard a lot of good things about Mexico. I wouldn't have said that. I'm, of course, I'm not on the Sunday show. Well, so Mexico, I and, you know, if, you, if you're in the wrong place, there was somebody who called it's true in. true in the United States. There's somebody who called in. Right, it was talking right. about drug uh, drug cartels running Mexico, and it's true in some places. But you you would much rather be in whatever uh, you know the worst city in the United States is better than uh, the best city run by a drug cartel in Mexico. So right. now I'm not saying that every city in Mexico is like that. Just some of those places. There you go, Corby. Yeah, thanks okay. for your call tonight, man. Appreciate point. hearing from you at eight fifty five four fifty free E Rods in Georgia. You're on Free Talk Live, E Rod. Yeah, hey guys. Hey, hey so it's um, that time of year again where um, out here in my local radio stations, uh, we are being bombarded by all these um, uh, commercials uh, about the uh, IRS and paying taxes. Mm. You know, commercials such as, you know, oh, you know, um, I played a TV dad and, you know, I had to teach my kid about taxes. And the first thing, the first rule is don't mess with the IRS. They're, <laughs> They're cracking down this year, you know. They can take your, you know, garnish your wages. They can, you know, levy your bank accounts. And, and they, you know, they can do all these horrible things. You know, and I'm listening to this thing. I mean, and it sounds so thuggish. I mean, that would be almost as though, like, I could just tell you, hey, you know, pay me some money or, you know, I'm going to break your legs, you know. I'm going to burn your house down. I'm going to rape your wife. I'm going to eat your kids. I mean, and, and it's just like, you know, I'm... You know, I, I got to the point. I mean, today I was listening to a commercial. I'm just going to take it. I mean, and it's just like, I mean, oh, my God. I mean, this is <laughs> – and then people are singing, you know, God bless America. So, you know, I mean, but listen to the threats. I mean, do people hear this when they say these things? You know, I mean, you know, we're going to take, I mean, the threats, we're going to take your money, we're going to take your house, we're going to take your business, mm-hmm. we're going to do everything. And what they don't, what people don't understand is who earned the money. It's my money. You have no authority to take my money, but yet and still, you know, don't mess with the IRS, you know? I mean, it's just, it's just, it's unbelievable. I share I the know. frustrations, I, I, especially I, I when you... I wanted to vent that, yeah. you know. Well, especially when you I, consider I, I, where the money's going to as well. I mean, it'd be one thing if it was, you know, feeding sick or helping sick people and feeding starving people. Uh, but it's another thing when it's going to kill people and murder and maim and destroy. Uh, exactly. Exactly. What's wrong with having your, your money? What's wrong with paying for the goods and services that you actually want? Right. And you. And I mean, as far as helping that? people out goes, I'd rather help them on my own rather than let some bureaucrats decide it. So I would yeah. still object to it even if it was doing that. Erod, thanks for your call tonight. I share the concerns. More coming up here on Free Talk Live. Virtually anyone can hack your cell phone and track your calls, your texts, your emails, your every movement, but only if they can detect a signal. Stay one step ahead of hackers and Big Brother with a block at Pocket, a custom-made pocket infused with pure silver that creates a complete Faraday enclosure for your cell phone. 
For free shipping to the lower 48, visit BlockItPocket.com or call 888-315-9618. BlockItPocket.com. Enhancing health and privacy. Did you know that organic sulfur can cleanse and defend your body against the poisons we're exposed to each day? Organic sulfur crystals from SulfurDefense.com help by forcing oxygen and nutrition into your cells while eliminating heavy metals, contaminants, and damaging radiation. Defend yourself and family from toxic assault with one of the most critical and essential minerals available today. Order online at SulfurDefense.com. That's SulfurDefense.com. Or call 800-593-6273. I've been told no in many different ways. I give you an order and you're going to obey it. Who told you to go this way? You can do that and you have to leave here. You cannot bring Simon to the rally. Walk with me. Well, I'm, I'm, no, I'm comfortable me. here, actually. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, whoa. hey, hey, hey. hey. Who do you think you Excuse are? me. There is no video or audio allowed in this office. No, I have work today. This is you ain't going to make. Wait, no, now. Wait a minute. Hey! Oh my god! Unbelievable! Why are you running from me? Because you scared me! What am I being detained for? You're being served. What is this? You're being served. What is this? Bureaucrats have a funny way of telling people no. That's the sound of the men working on the chain. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Never, ever send a follow-up email asking, did you get my email? Email 101, if it didn't bounce back undeliverable, it got where you sent it. And avoid transmedia pestering, like calling to ask, did you get my email? Or emailing to say, I left you a voicemail. If your emails and voicemails aren't being acknowledged, your problem isn't technology, it's technique. Is your message concise and understandable? Have you boiled it down to seem as relevant as possible to the recipient? In other words, Is it the opposite of spam or junk mail? All of this really matters if you're a job seeker. But even if you're not, with money and attention so scarce now, effective communication skills have never been more important. For more tips, hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and you can take control of the airwaves toll-free. At 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Still to come here tonight, uh, the youngest medical cannabis patient. Got some real good news about uh, this young person. We'll share that with you. Also, uh, blockchain.info is back online. They had a hardware issue uh, within the a couple days ago, and it looked like they were mostly back up last night. And it looks like today they are fully back online 
uh, and they have the best online wallet that you can find. And by the way, Visa and MasterCard have outages as well. Just so you know, blockchain.info does a great job of allowing you access to your Bitcoin on your favorite Android device. Or if you've got an iPhone or some other sort of phone, Windows Phone, BlackBerry, etc., you can just use the blockchain.info website and their HTML5 wallet right on your web browser on your favorite phone. So blockchain.info, go there and get your free Bitcoin wallet today. If you don't have one yet, this is the perfect opportunity for you to get your first one. They've also got neat tools on there that allow you to kind of research the blockchain. You can look at transactions. You can send Bitcoin anonymously as well. It's a really great site and very useful and free. Blockchain.info for your Bitcoin wallet tonight. Let's go to Trey. He's on the line in Portland, Oregon via Skype. Trey, you're on Free Talk Live. Hey, y'all. How you doing today? Welcome, sir. All right. So um, I am in Portland right now, but I'm originally from Louisiana. And something um, when I found this out a few years ago, uh, this kind of really bothered me. So the, um, I'm not sure how aware of this that you guys might be, but Louisiana is the prison capital of the world. Yes. It, mm -hmm. Yeah, it actually houses uh, more prisoners than Iran, Germany and China per capita. And um, the, the, the big problem is and, and and my my kind of my end statement is is I'm not sure like you know where you know the ball falls is for libertarians on the prison system being like government ran or versus being private privately ran and everything. But the reason it's so terrible there is because not necessarily that it's privatized, but it's the incentive structure um, for these prisons. So the the we have parishes instead of counties in Louisiana, and the local parish sheriffs are the guys who are actually running the and and they the meaning they actually have ownership in the prisons and they actually have ownership in the prisons hmm. so there seems to be a conflict of interest there right away but what yeah. a lot so wait you're saying that you're saying is, the sheriffs in the parishes have ownership stake in the private prisons that are in louisiana exactly right exactly wow. right and, and from so what I understand, by the way, before you go on, from what I understand, Louisiana has some also really draconian drug laws to where possession of marijuana, for instance, is uh, punished pretty severely there. So they're just loading people into those prisons as well. Very much so. Right. So what happened, I think it's on your second or I think it's your third offense for minor possession. It creates a felony. You can go to you can go to prison for um I think it was like 20 or 30 years, something oh, really ridiculous. Yeah, there are people but, in, in, in prison right now for nothing, uh, for the rest for the rest of their lives, for nothing more than possessing marijuana. Right, exactly. And, and it's it, what's really interesting is, and well, we're going to get into an education aspect in a second. But so what these um, sheriffs will do and, and a lot of times is um, kind of lease the prisons out to actual private, you know, companies who run prisons. And um, and they'll even make more money that way. Um, I, I'm, I'm not sure exactly how, how that profit structure works, but it, it doesn't seem to be. It, it, it seems very unethical, you know. Oh, yeah. In, in the end, when you look at it. But if you look at um, so these are the local parish level prisons. But if you look at our big state prison there in Angola, you have these guys who are lifers who are there for things like murder and and so forth, who are getting like, you know, all of these different educational type things like learning how to, you know, work on vehicles and and just all these different kind of you know kind of um trade type type um trade type education mm -hmm. is what they're getting but they're never going to get out of prison they're there for life but these guys who end up for two years at a time in these local parish prisons anywhere from six months to two years they literally sit in these big open bay um dormitory style prisons all day long and learn That's how to play do. spades and mm -hmm. learn how to play spades they had get no sort of you know betterment whatsoever no sort of re um, chance for reform mm -hmm. and what happens is when they get out they have nothing better to do than probably go you know do something you know stupid like you know hold up a drugstore or, or or a convenience store or whatever or you know something minor like getting caught well, with like in you know very small amount of pot well um i was in prison for eight and a half years in florida now that you know, Louisiana, Florida, different. Certainly, Louisiana is the worst place in America to be in prison, in my opinion, from everything I've read. But I've got to say that some of the classes that they had at the prison weren't really that useful. I was in prison in 19, uh, taking a class in 1989 and 90 on um, how to fix car carburetors. I mean, no cars had carburetors at that time. Uh, <laughs> it was all fuel injection. Yeah. Now, certainly the welding class and the carpentry class, there weren't a lot of innovation in the last 15 years in welding and carpentry, and they had, you know, TIGs, MIGs, and whatever, ARCs. Uh, but 
you know, I think it depends on on the class too. I really think that it's the uh, it's the attitude of the individual when they get out. You could have gotten sure. no uh, school at all and come out with the right attitude and and make a better life for yourself. Or you could get all the schooling in the world and it it wouldn't matter. Now I'm not to, I'm not saying that schooling doesn't matter. I'm just saying that. You know, let's uh, let's not say that that's the only issue. I guess is what I would right. Uh, um, I, I have one one last thing, and then and then I'll jump off. Is and it's that question I kind of posed at the beginning: is in in a libertarian world, where does be it a state run prison system versus a private run prison system? Where does the prison system period kind of fit in in sort of a libertarian and libertarian? That's a good world? question because right now, if you look at uh, there's a lot of things to dislike about privately run prisons. A number of them are rightly criticized for a number of uh, violations of people's rights and just treating people poorly and things like that. So it, it comes back to the uh, the general statement that if you privatize something, that basically just means that it's government granting a monopoly privilege to one of their right. corporate buddies. It really and is. And I don't want to see that. That's not what I consider to be a solution to exactly. helping people. Yeah, well, um, what prisons? The, the problem is, is that um, honestly, when it comes to a prison, the the goal is custody, care, and control, and mm-hmm. many many different prisons could provide this. And there's no reason that inmates shouldn't be able to choose between which prison keeps them out of the regular population. Now, the fact is, people want to see prisoners punished. They think for some reason or another, if you take Mm. away TVs, you take away weights, you take away art class, you take away everything you can possibly take away from these guys, that somehow, if you take bad people, put them in with other bad people, treat them badly for as long as you can, um, and then you let them go, and they're somehow going to be good the, <laughs> right. the, the, you know this yeah. ludicrous notion that this kind of uh, you know putting them in a dungeon is going to somehow make them uh, better folks which is obvious patent nonsense if yeah. inmates could choose themselves between which prison they wanted to be at you'd see a marked increase in how the prisons uh, treated inmates because the fact sure. is happy inmates are safer more likely to be rehabilitated um, and you you know, this is this is the big deal. What what the prisons should be worried about is, you know, are we can we break up the gangs? Can we make sure that mm-hmm. people are staying inside the fence? And those kind of issues, not whether well, we don't like this. He shouldn't be able to just move around as much as he wants. If an inmate can pay for his transport from one prison to another, and that prison wants to have him, then then that's what the way it should be. Each one mm-hmm. of these prisoners should be com- prisons should be competing for the business of the prisoners. Right. And unfortunately, it's just like, you know, the present structure, you know, it it just creates a kind of supply and demand, doesn't it? I mean, really? Well, under the present structure, because uh, inmates can't move around from prison to prison at will. um, And I understand why people don't want that. That sounds like a terrible idea. Giving inmates what they convicts, what they want. We should give them everything that they don't want. That's going to be the tricky part in implementing something like that. Where prisoners actually but are prison able to doesn't choose. do anything for anybody. It doesn't do anything right. for the victims. Sure. Yeah, some people walk out having been um, all the logic is on our side, but we're talking about an emotional issue where, like you're saying, Mark, people look at prisoners and they immediately think bad guy and treat him bad and yeah. starve him and you know. <laughs> make it so he can't get sunlight and they just want to treat these people horribly and that doesn't make people better it doesn't correct anybody and trey i'm glad you brought this up tonight thanks for the call i appreciate hearing from you so yeah get i think the idea of prisons competing uh on the basis of a variety of things like we've got good good jobs things for you to do things to learn uh this is going to upset a lot of people so how do we get from here to there if you've got any ideas feel free to share them here on free talk live The following is an important free offer for smokers only. The makers of Victor, the world's most advanced e-cigarette, have just authorized the release of free starter kits to all smokers who call in the next 10 minutes. Valued at $99, these Victor starter kits are available for free, but only while supplies last. To guarantee your free kit, call in the next 10 minutes, 1-800-564-6941. The revolutionary Victor design creates only water vapor. There is no foul-smelling smoke and no unhealthy tar. This allows individuals to enjoy the nicotine they love without restriction, no matter where they are. The financial advantages over cigarettes are considerable as well. It is estimated that the average smoker can save hundreds of dollars a month with Victor. Again, free Victor starter kits are now available to any smoker who calls in the next 10 minutes. This is a radio-only offer not available in stores, so call now for your free kit. 
Hey everyone, have you heard about the No No Hair Removal Device that's sweeping the globe? If you want to go weeks without shaving and get smooth, professional quality results, here's our favorite host, Cheryl, for No No Hair Removal. Thanks. Hey gals, I love talking about my No No. It's this cute little hair removal system that you can take with you and use almost anywhere at home or on the road. No more expensive in-office treatments, painful waxing, and no more wasting your valuable time. Got unwanted facial hair? No No Hair has patented Thermacon technology that works on all hair and skin colors. So it's perfect for using on all body parts. And now you can take advantage of this incredible risk-free trial. Get the No-No, the facial kit, a travel case, and a $100 discount shopping card. And you don't risk a penny to try it. Try the incredible No-No hair completely risk-free. Call 1-800-953-6062. That's 800-953-6062. 800-953-6062. Free Talk Live, the show where anyone can call about whatever they want. And we do mean anyone. Ginger in Florida, you're on Free Talk Live. I just thought I'd call and give you all some news. We found Ginger. out on a... Wait, I thought your name was Paula. Huh? Are, you tra- are you trying to hide your identity, Paula? Are you trying to protect yourself from the NSA and the New World Order? I thought your name was Paula. <laughs> no, anyway... Your I name's told- Ginger? Yeah. Why has it been Paula every other time you've called? I guess she does call, too. But anyway, Do I just sister? want to give you some information. Uh, we yeah, just heard on another Ginger. program <laughs> that, well, actually, the whole world is going to a world collapse. They said <laughs> we, have, we have till the 1st of June. So what but I want to know, uh, Ginger, is do you know who Paula is? Well, I, I'm trying to give you some information. You've given me the information. You said the world's going to collapse in less than a week. Well, I'm going to start drinking good. now. And I'm not coming out of it until after uh, July's over. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click Get Notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. Imagine for a moment a radio program, the most personal of mediums, that reaches hundreds of thousands of people on more than 140 radio stations across the U.S. and around the world through the Internet with podcasts and live streams. Imagine the advertising is affordable from $600 to $6,000 a month. Free Talk Live is that program. We will work with you to get clicks, calls, views, or sales. Email me at mark at freetalklive.com. You can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Bring up whatever you want. You're toll free. We're talking about prisons at the moment. And what is an ideal situation for corrections? That's kind of a term that's used today. Right. They don't the say re- rehabilitation any longer. In the uh, the government world. Um, and, you know, if you were correcting people, then that would be a- an accurate term. But that's not really what's happening in prisons and jails. There's not much correcting going on. People aren't coming out of there good people in a lot of in a lot of cases. Some of them are good people before they're put in there. And then maybe not so good when they get out because they're around a bunch of bad people. And there's all kinds of problems with the system as it is today. And some people will point to privatization and say, well, this is the solution. And I'm not so sure about about that because there are a lot of problems with the private prison system as well and i think that's because they suffer from the kind of standard privatization problem which is that when you privatize something that is currently a government-run service 
you all you're doing is you're handing that monopoly over to a gov- to uh, to some sort of company, some corporation that has buddy buddy uh, ties with the people in government. It's the good old boy system. The person who so, won for whatever reason the contract, uh, the bid for the contract, right? Yeah, and so okay, so now you're going to privatize uh, an abusive monopolistic system and expect that it's going to be better for the people on the inside? No, certainly not. While it may be true that a private prison can run a prison more efficiently, that doesn't mean that they're running it more compassionately. And that doesn't mean that they're running it in a way that is going to help these guys. And oh. isn't that the the purpose? I mean, besides locking up somebody like Charles Manson, who, you know, it's probably beyond help. Besides that purpose for prisons, a lot of these guys are going to get out and gals, I guess. But uh, don't you want them to be better people when they're out or at least have a chance at a better life instead of just going and, and c- committing some sort of crime because that's all they know? Yeah. So I think that, um, you know, having thought about this a great deal, I spent eight and a half years of my life in prison and, you know, getting into the ideas of liberty. This is a tough one. This yeah. is a bit of a Gordian knot, but I think I have some answers. First off, oh, hold on to the answers. We'll get to that here in a moment. We do have uh, your calls to get to and want to tell you about Pro XPN. I was uh, talking to a friend today. He was at his workplace. He uh, was wanted to do something with his internet connection, but he couldn't do it because at, at his workplace, they prohibit certain websites from being accessed, like, say, Facebook, or uh, certain search terms from being entered. So you can uh, prevent that from happening. You can open up your access, whether you're at school or you're in another country where there's internet restrictions or you're at a workplace. If you have the ability to install software on your laptop or whatever device you're using, then you can have full access to the internet using ProXPN. Go to ProXPN.com slash FTL. There's a free account, so you can start out, try it tonight, and see what I mean by this and see how well it works. Uh, the free account, there are some limitations, though. You get uh, you are limited on your bandwidth. Uh, you are limited on some of the things you can do, like you can't do torrenting with their free account at ProXPN. But go to ProXPN.com slash FTL. You can grab their app for Windows, Mac, iOS, or Android devices, plus Linux users. There is a setup available for you that's just a little bit different. And uh, if you are a Linux user, you'll have to reach out to ProXPN and get the instructions from them. But the service allows you to actually protect yourself online from people that might be snooping on your Wi-Fi packets, uh, protect yourself from nosy internet service providers. And the way they do that is they encrypt your internet connection. They encrypt everything that goes in and out of your computer. And you can go and get their software, proxpn.com slash FTL. Get started with it right now. And when you're ready to upgrade to the premium account for unlimited bandwidth, servers around the world that you can access, and the ability to privately torrent Go to proxpn.com slash FTL and use our discount code. uh, You get 20% off for the lifetime of the account with discount code FTL20 at proxpn.com slash FTL. You want to save even more? Use Bitcoin to pay for the annual plan. And by the way, if you buy the annual plan with that discount code, the price breaks down to 5 bucks a month. So you get amazing privacy protections. You get to choose the server around the world that you're connecting to so it looks like you're coming from that server to any website you're visiting. All kinds of privacy protection here for 5 bucks a month with code FTL20 at proxpn.com slash FTL. And there is, uh, by the way, they don't keep any logs of your online habits. And you get a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee at proxpn.com slash FTL. We've got Stephen in Utah on Skype. Stephen, you're on Free Talk Live with Ian and Mark. Yeah, I wanted to talk about the concept of prisons in a free society or a libertarian society. Sure. Yeah, um, I think it's I think it's kind of important to go back to the original notion of why is this person being imprisoned? And in a, in a libertarian society or even in today's society, I think that would necessitate them violating somebody's property rights, whether it's the the right in the the property they've justly acquired or the right to own their own body. I mean, mm-hmm. it has to arrive in this for it to even for someone to even advocate someone being punished or in any way trying trying to rectify the situation. Yeah, and I would ultimately be, any solution. The, the first thing I would do with the, the, with a property rights violator, and by that I mean you know like things in the real world, not human beings. Um, is the first thing yeah. I would do with them. I wouldn't even consider prison for them immediately. That would be no. a situation of house arrest, uh, restitution. You know, restitution, things like that. Yes. Yeah, I mean, that's that's kind of the whole idea of, the, the idea of needing to punish somebody is 
kind of silly and archaic, I think. Um, the whole goal well, is to restore to the individual and darn whose rights were violated. It's it's really well, profitable because the fact well, is, well, yeah, is I, it, I can't make I can't make arguments against the state doing the things it does for profit. I mean, that makes sense. I mean, right. They want to violate rights. Well, and make people out there listening, it, but, many of them are going to say, "Well, prison, prison, prison." But the fact is, of the matter is, it's it's ridiculous. If this uh, house arrest costs you nearly nothing. They pay for the house arrest themselves. They have to feed themselves. They house themselves. They do all these things on their own. You want to send somebody to prison where we have to pay thirty, forty, fifty, sixty thousand dollars a year to, to house them? Hey folks, back off. Get well, out I mean, of my pocketbook. I mean it seems obvious that these ideas would be taught to keep advocating the ideas of the state because it just builds upon the state's, you know, authority and power. But ultimately, I see that dwindling, as I'm, I'm sure most of your listeners do. And ultimately, if there's no violation of property rights, there'd be no reason. So just pardon the people who have no victim. And then secondly, um, you, need, you would need to have, have a way to, to restore to the victim who, who had what was taken from him. So if somebody was killed, I guess that would be um, Very you know, some type of con- contract. I mean, it is difficult, but ideally it would be probably based on insurance and contracts and restitution. Because putting someone in jail for killing or even killing that person doesn't re- restore what was taken. It doesn't bring somebody back from the dead. And I know that's kind of a, a visceral, that's a really emotional topic for a lot of people. But um, yeah, it's, it's really a waste of money. It, it doesn't solve the problem. Uh, being mean doesn't make people be nice. It's kind of we learn all this stuff at a young age, but then the idea of the state kind of comes in and kind of twists our logic a little bit. Good points tonight, Stephen. Anything else you want to share? Um, yeah, I'm just uh, curious what 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 your other callers thought. Um, what you guys thought about the idea of prison? Um, I, I I know Mark, you probably have a stronger opinion than any of us, having been in prison for a while. So. I'd be yeah. curious more to what your answers are. Very good. Thanks for your call tonight, Stephen. We'll uh, continue Thanks. to explore this. You can handle that dog in the background there. It sounds like I'm going to go outside potty. or something. Yeah. <laughs> um, so the fact is, is I think if you stop the war on drugs, you're going to see a dramatic drop in uh, crime. Now, yeah, absolutely. I'm not, I'm not just talking about victimless crimes here. People going to jail for, um, you know, trafficking or possession or any of those things. I'm talking about people who commit crimes to get drugs. So there's much a, of that. There's a lot. There's a lot of that. A lot of robberies and breakings and, and enterings and things like that. Now, there could be some small increase in crimes for like some people who do PCP and go bananas in a parking lot somewhere. When's and the last time you heard about somebody doing PCP? It's been a long time, but this is this seems to, there's always seems to be some like remember the the the, um, the bath salt stories. Oh yeah, the, those were a the lot zombies. like the like lot like the the PCP stories okay. of, of a decade sure. and a half ago. So there's there always seems to be some crazy drug out there where people go bananas on. Mm-hmm. Probably a lot of that would be mitigated if people could just get their hands on marijuana legally. That's just me guessing. Oh, yeah. But, that's true. You know, marijuana, cocaine, heroin, these seem to go a long way in satisfying the drug urges of the general population. Obviously, some of them are going to get a hold of the bad stuff. And I think you're responsible for all of your actions, no matter what state of mind you're in. If you took... PCP and it caused you to go bananas in a parking lot and then you come to and you really don't remember it, I don't care. If you've hurt people's cars, um, you're responsible for uh, the repairs. If you harm people physically, you're responsible for restitution in that area. So I, I think that, uh, you know, in, I think Stephen's invitation is a good one here. If you've got any ideas you want to share, because we certainly are not a compendium of information about this. Um, we've got some ideas, but they certainly aren't the best ones necessarily. What do you think as far as marketizing prisons? changing the status from this monopoly government one size fits all uh, system to one in which the prisoner gets to choose that different options are on the table and what if the prisoner would have to actually pay his own way through the prison system let's explore that idea here in a little bit like by working yeah uh what would happen then we'll talk more about it in hour number two coming up here on free talk live quantum vibe it's year 25 23 Colonies on Venus, Mars, and Mercury. People travel in bubbles, fly at hyperspeed. With brain implants and artificial gravity. A scientific genius and his clever assistant set out on an adventure through the solar system on a secret mission to find the key to access new frontiers and save liberty. Quantumvibe.com from Big Head Press. 
flooring experts at Lumber Liquidators have over 8 million square feet of top quality flooring that must be cleared out by end of quarter, March 31st. Get donor oak laminate flooring for only 49 cents a square foot. Exotic black mamba hand-scraped bamboo for just $1.89. Even three-quarter inch pre-finished hickory hardwood for an unheard of $2.59 a square foot. They've got free samples at your local store plus 22 months special financing available. So go to LumberLiquidators.com now to find the store nearest you. When I found the Free State Project, I knew it was the key to achieving liberty in my lifetime. It's awesome to be surrounded by like-minded, freedom-loving activists who've moved here to New Hampshire. From politics to civil disobedience, we have it all. Where I came from, it felt that no matter what I did, liberty was dying. Perhaps you feel the same way? Call 888-377-2515 now to learn more about the Free State Project. That's 888-377-2515 or visit freestateproject.org. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty News and activist updates online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Wednesday, March 19, 2014. Gold open today at $1,357, silver open at $20.87, and Bitcoin is trading at $613.79. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Affordable Sound, CD and DVD duplication for all your print and audio duplication needs. Online, affordablesound.com, or call them 512-459-5253. Support also comes from Sovereign BTC, media, marketing, and consulting for the Bitcoin ecosystem. Online at SovereignBTC.com. And support comes from The Corey Moore Show, live Friday nights, 9 o'clock central at CoreyMooreShow.com. In the news, the Deputy Defense Department Inspector General for Intelligence and Special Program Assessments for the Pentagon claims no knowledge of NSA spying. Anthony C. Thomas says he was not aware of the bulk phone records collection program until it was exposed last June. Russia Today reports that his words contradict those of other U.S. officials who have since June claimed the NSA's global surveillance operation came with the proper safeguards, including that of the Pentagon's Inspector General. It's being called a minor victory for privacy advocates. That comes after a federal judge denies a request to allow federal prosecutors to search an unidentified person's email address. United States Judge John Ficholia made the ruling as he served as magistrate in what Reuters calls a case involving a defense contractor accused of corruption and conspiracy. On Tuesday, the Rethink 9-11 campaign launched a new campaign of video ads in the Toronto subway system. Over the next two weeks, Rethink 9-11 hopes 1.2 million residents of Toronto will see a digital ad showing the collapse of World Trade Center 7, the third building that collapsed on September 11, 2001. The advertisements will coincide with a three-week Canadian speaking tour for founder of Architects and Engineers for 9-11 Truth, Richard Gage, AIA. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Roberts & Roberts Brokerage Incorporated, specializing in precious metals since 1977. They don't feed the banks by taking credit cards, but you can bet they take Bitcoin. Online at rrbi.co or by phone 800-874-9760. Support also comes from Central Texas Gunworks, home of one of the first Bitcoin ATMs in the country where you can buy and sell Bitcoin. Visit the ATM at 321 West Ben White Boulevard, number 203. And support comes from Cabo Bob's Southwest Burritos with homemade tortillas. Mm, online at CaboBob's.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Wednesday, March 19th, 2014. Check out the website at TheLibertyBeat.com. On Tuesday, Russian President Vladimir Putin signed a treaty in Moscow declaring Crimea to be a part of the Russian Federation and promising not to annex any other regions of Ukraine. Putin proclaimed the recent disputed vote in Crimea as victory for the Russian people. The Russian parliament is expected to ratify the measure within days. 
The treaty comes at the same time the United States, Britain, Japan and other nations have begun imposing sanctions and withdrawing support for Russia. According to a new survey conducted by researchers at the University of Chicago, nearly half of American adults believe in at least one medical conspiracy theory. The researchers surveyed 1,351 adults online between August and September of 2013. They showed participants six popular conspiracy theories related to the medical industry and asked if they had heard of them and whether they agreed or disagreed. The most believed theory seemed to be that United States medical regulators suppressed natural cures, with 37% agreeing and less than a third disagreeing. Other theories include suppression of knowledge regarding cell phones and cancer, dangers of genetically modified organisms, vaccination harm, water fluoridation, and the creation of AIDS. The researchers state those who believe in conspiracies are more likely to be health conscious and seek alternative medicine. Californians are rushing to obtain permits to carry concealed guns. The San Jose Mercury News reports that requests have spiked, especially in rural counties or politically conservative areas. The public interest in concealed carry stems from a federal appeals court ruling last month that made it easier for residents to obtain the hard-to-get permits. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from GrowYourOwnGroceries.org. Learn to grow, prepare, and preserve your own food and medicine at GrowYourOwnGroceries.org. This is the Liberty Beat for Wednesday, March 19th, 2014. I'm Brian Hagen reporting. Reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. This is the Onion Week in Review. According to a Stanford University study released Wednesday, there is no logical reason why planes are able to fly. Reiterating that they fully understand the concepts of lift, thrust, and propulsion, lead physicists told reporters they were still unable to reasonably explain how a large 500,000-pound object is capable of staying up in the air without falling. We've come up with several theories, including wind propulsion, some sort of gravity suspension effect, also the possibility that the clouds pull the plane skyward, but... You know, beyond that, just don't understand how a large metal tube could just kind of float in the air like that. And it's going at like 500 miles per hour, which means that when I'm on a plane, I'm also going 500 miles per hour? I mean, that's crazy. I mean, why is my hair blowing back and forth? The Stanford team added they plan to devote the next two years to a new study on why telephones can hear. In other news, an urban planner is stuck in traffic of his own design, and a kid screams behind a passenger during an entire plane crash. Visit theonion.com slash newsbeat for more. This is Free Talk Live, and for those of you just tuning in to the program here in hour number two, first hour, we had a call from TSA George, who actually is no longer with the TSA, so we'll just have to call him something else. He was actually talking about how he left the TSA, and finally, after 11 years, he'd, uh, the final straw had dropped, and he uh, called it quits. He's now driving for Uber, actually, in the D.C. area, which is very cool. So if you're looking for a ride in D.C. and you're using the Uber service, there's a good chance that George may be uh, picking you up, which is very cool. And that uh, ended up leading into a topic later on about prisons. Just somebody happened to call and wanted to talk about that. And I would guess being a TSA agent might be slightly better than uh, being a corrections officer. What do you mean better? Like, as far as the the job, you know, you're dealing with uh, average people as opposed to criminals. You don't have to strip search anybody typically at the TSA. I mean, yeah, you are still patting people down, but to me, the TSA is a lighter version of a uh, of a prison shakedown. You know where you have to bend over and cough and do all that stuff, get completely naked. You know, I don't, I don't know that I even agree. I don't agree with what you say. I don't no? think. Um, the fact is, is the TSA agents are dealing with people who are far more surly. Um, I mean, mm. you know, people who believe they're free, having to go through that uh, little checkpoint there in East Germany that uh, has every that's in, encapsulated in every. Uh, airport across America, those people are going to be pretty surly. You're so? really messing with their day. These are, you know, these are people that are used to living their lives. Convicts have every expectation that they're going to be messed with, um, you know, moment by moment. Yeah. The, uh, I mean, is I think a prison probably. You know, generally the sort of atmosphere isn't so great when you have to look at it and everything. But that TSA checkpoint's got to be a nasty, pl- a unpleasant place to work, in my opinion. Um, this is one of the things uh, about government jobs that tends to drive out 
the good productive folks is that they just can't handle it. Um, George left. He just didn't want to be disciplined for having refu- basically not taken the shoes off of an 80 year old man on a flight that was hot listed because of a guy who had uh, who, didn't, who wasn't even on the flight. You know, he had bought a ticket and then changed his ticket to a different day. Mm. So, I mean, it's just this crazy, stupid bureaucracy. Well, there's I, bureaucracy at both uh, locations. Yeah, there absolutely is. But what we were talking about toward the end of the last hour, and you're welcome to call in and share your thoughts at 855-450-FREE, is how would the prison system, for lack of a better term, this re- supposedly rehabilitating, correcting system, uh, which, of course, doesn't do any of those things today for the most part, how would that system be different If there were no single monopolistic state around, if we actually had some level of competition out there for prisons. Now, you suggested, Mark, that maybe uh, prisons could sort of offer them themselves as a service to someone who has been convicted of a crime to, you know, let this person know that, hey, you can come over here to Joe's prison and we've got decent food and you can work at these types of jobs and you can make a little bit of money over here or you can go over to Jane's prison and she's got Got these sorts of you know services that are better than Joe's prison, etc. To have them sort of compete for uh, the prisoners and the and the money. But another question, that, or another issue, I think that's worth bringing up here is, and and Dr. Mary Ruart addresses this in her book, Healing Our World, which is a great book, talking about well, shouldn't the prisoner also be paying for their own imprisonment? Absolutely. In that you know if they're working. Uh, because you would want the prisoners to be productive in there rather than just sitting in a cell. So if the prisoner is working then and getting a paycheck, some of that money could be going to restitute a victim. Some of that money can be going to the overhead of keeping them in the prison, so prison operations. And a, a smaller portion could go into a savings account for the prisoner for when they get out. That would be pretty a nice setup, right? Yeah, well, I think it is. I think that um, the prison, you know, there's going to be some people that just refuse to work. And in that case, they would get a bare minimum of, uh, you know, sustenance or whatever. Yeah. If you if you're working, you get a decent meal. If you're not working, you get a sustenance kind of meal. What right? are we talking about here? Are we talking about a bowl of gruel um, every once in a while, supplemented with some chicken cartilage? Um, you well, know, no. I mean, stuck I in a, uh, a fenced in area with a, a lean to to keep the sun off. I mean, is that what we're talking about? I mean, that's, that's not sustenance. How, that's not what I would would want to see. But that's another question. Would market prisons lead to more compassion, or would they lead to a race to the bottom as far as cutting costs Would prisoners themselves want to share um you know some of their earnings when you know because prisoners do make money in this mm-hmm. country um share some of their earnings with their fellow prisoners in order to see the ones that refuse to work get treated better well that could I be another thing would. is the people who refuse to work could depend on the charity of outsiders whether they be insiders or outsiders maybe there'd be uh, charities out there who would want to take care of these, you know, lazy prisoners who didn't want to do anything. No, they might uh, do it for a variety of reasons. They could be protesting something. Uh, who knows what, what yeah. the reasons are? It could be. But uh, but again, you know, what would it be like? Would we see? I would like to believe that we would see more compassionate prisons, prisons that are that would be designed towards getting somebody better and well, more healthy and community oriented. Well, I think the first thing we need to say is before we even talk about prisons, we need to talk about why you would have a prison. Mm-hmm. What's the purpose of a prison? Because prisons are pretty bad at most of the things they're supposed to do. There's people have you know have crimes committed against them. They're not made whole by people sending being sent to prison. They're ma- they'd be ma- made whole or at least more whole than you possibly could with restitution. Restitution's best done in On the, the free world. Sure. Now there may be organizations like say for instance, Ian, I uh, steal your car. I don't have uh, insurance uh, against my own um, you know criminal acts or whatever. I have to pay mm. the. You know, maybe the judge says it's ten thousand dollars for the car and five thousand dollars punitive for the fact that you stole it rather than sort of an accident or something like that. So fifteen thousand dollars punitive damages. I don't have fifteen thousand dollars. So maybe there'll be companies that rise up that say, hmm, we'd be happy to give you that fifteen thousand dollars for a contract to work for us for six months. We're going to be doing, uh, you know, fruit picking mm-hmm. or you know whatever it is, and it's probably going to be pretty awful conditions. Now, this is the equivalent of 
prison indentured and hard uh, yes indentured servitude hard labor the things that we sentence people to but at that point you'd have the option I would have the option as the thief I'd have the option well okay this company's offering me uh, fifteen thousand dollars for five and a half months labor this one's for six this one's for six and a half yep. um, this one promises this these uh, you know conditions this one that conditions now of course the conditions can be changed at any time we know there's always the bait and switch but there would be media out there that would be interested in these kinds of things. So I, I think that we need to move from punishment and punitive measures more so to restitution, focusing on the victim, the person who's been harmed. Because in most cases now, the victim doesn't get much of a say in how somebody's punished. And Or if, if, if there is a victim, right? I mean, a lot of these people, like as you pointed out, are in there for drug crimes. I think and that, of course, those aren't real crimes because there's no victims. So I they just end up being slaves. 75% of the people who are in prison wouldn't be there at all yeah. if, it was, if, if it wasn't for the drug war. So yeah, if, if you end the war on drugs and end all victimless crimes, and prostitution, gambling, etc., then that would really cut down on the prison population. And then we could maybe focus more on what to do then. And then when you've got somebody who's stolen something, you need to co concentrate on restitution. Right. If the person is sorry and you know willing to just kind of work on their own, keep working at their job and take a cut of their paycheck and send that to the victim, then they wouldn't need to go behind bars. Right. I don't think everybody would want to see somebody go into this hard labor indentured servitude thing. If you stole my car, I may not say, well, you know, I want you to go into an Yeah, I want all my money right now. You, you, I might be able to say, okay, a thousand dollars a month for 15 months. That's cool. We can do that. Um, but I just want you to understand no more of the stealing stuff. You've learned your lesson, right? It's tricky. Because just about everybody who's listening to me has stolen something and learned from that experience. It just, that's what has to happen is, is that somebody, basically you've got to steal something and learn from the experience, whether you do it at four or whether you do it at 14 or whether you do it at 24. These are all great ideas. But implementing them, boy. It's impossible. That's the there's tricky a, in, part. There's a prison industrial complex, and the, the people that make the money off of the prison industrial complex don't want to let that go. They're not going to – they don't want to see the drug war go away. Um, I've, I've heard – it. wasn't it in California that it was the uh, prison guard union that came out against marijuana legalization um, in one of their – when they had one of their referendums? I don't doubt it at all. So, like, just getting decriminalization of marijuana is enough of a challenge to go in and say, hey, we don't think you should have to go to prison for seven years. How about three years? That alone, getting that through a political process is tricky enough. It sure is. So we really, what we're talking about would require a major paradigm shift and or a major movement of people, which we can talk about that coming up. The following is an important free offer for smokers only. The makers of Victor, the world's most advanced e-cigarette, have just authorized the release of free starter kits to all smokers who call in the next 10 minutes. Valued at $99, these Victor starter kits are available for free, but only while supplies last. To guarantee your free kit, call in the next 10 minutes, 1-800-564-6941. The revolutionary Victor design creates only water vapor. There is no foul-smelling smoke and no unhealthy tar. This allows individuals to enjoy the nicotine they love without restriction, no matter where they are. The financial advantages over cigarettes are considerable as well. It is estimated that the average smoker can save hundreds of dollars a month with Victor. Again, free Victor starter kits are now available to any smoker who calls in the next 10 minutes. This is a radio-only offer not available in stores, so call now for your free kit. 1-800-564-6941. 1-800-564-6941. One eight hundred five six four six nine four one. Gold. It's like nothing else on Earth. From the Romans through the Renaissance, from the Industrial Age to the Space Age, gold has weathered the test of time. For six thousand years, gold has remained the ultimate store of wealth. According to the World Gold Council and the U.S. Mint, demand is at an all-time high. The stage is being set for the reemergence of gold as the common sense alternative to a fiat paper currency that gets weaker every day. Midas Resources is proud to offer the hard-hitting report that arms you with the truth you need to protect you and your family from the Fed's plans for your hard-earned money. Don't gamble with your future. Call Midas Resources today and ask for your free copy of As Good As Gold. Call 1-800-686-223. 
837 for the report the Fed hopes you'll never see. As good as gold can be yours by calling 800-686-2237. If you have ever thought about owning gold, you must read this report. Call Midas today at 800-686-2237. Uh, excuse me, is this where I get a license to start a new business? I wouldn't be hasty. You have to get a mm -hmm. license to go out of business, too, you know. Oh, well, look, I've invented this little anti-gravity machine, see? Oh, is that why you're walking two inches above the floor? <laughs> oh, yes, it's it's very comfortable. It saves on shoe leather. Yeah, well, you have to fill out these forms and report to the Human Services Department of Manpower Orientation and register with the Fair Employment Practice Commission, just the Wage and Hour Division of the Employment Standards Administration, the State Sales and Income Tax Division, the Internal Revenue Service, look, and the I Social Security Administration of the Department of Health, Education, and Welfare. And, of course, OSHA. OSHA? I thought that was a little town in Wisconsin. You'll find out. Say, floating around like that could be dangerous. Have you checked with the Consumer Product Safety Commission? Well, not yet. Come you see, to think of it, you actually are flying, aren't you? Look, you need to go over to the Federal Aviation Administration and the Transportation... It's very hard to get anything done these days if you're in business. But Free Enterprise built this country. Think what could happen if we don't keep it free. A public service of this station and the Center for the Defense of Free Enterprise, Bellevue, Washington. We just can't have people floating about unregulated, you know. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Nestle Tollhouse Morsels, helping you create special moments and memories your family will cherish forever. Visit us at tollhouse.com. You may bake for birthdays and holidays, but why stop there? Sweeten up the rest of the year by designating monthly dessert days. Treat your family to one of their favorites or surprise them with something new. Either way, you'll create a tradition everyone will love. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. You can connect with the Liberty Radio Network via our Facebook page at facebook.lrn.fm. That's facebook.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Take control of the airwaves toll free and bring up whatever you want here. At 855-450-FREE, that's 855-450-3733. We're talking about some pretty important ideas here. The idea of getting the government out of corrections or imprisonment or rehabilitation or what would it even be called? Would it be re would rehabilitation be the best term? I think if, if it weren't government run, the idea of you know taking somebody who was a threat to society and hopefully helping them be not a threat in the future – um, before letting them out of uh, this place. Well, rehabilitation? No, mostly people react to consequences. Um, so I don't think there's anything wrong with the term corrections. corrections. I think that the, what's wrong with the term is is that people believe, you know, that we're led to believe that anything like that is occurring. Well, I shouldn't say anything like that. I do think some people are corrected by the prison system. For instance, I went to prison and I didn't. You know, I didn't do what I was accused of doing, which is murder. I had mm -hmm. never killed anybody. But what I did was I hung around the wrong places. I was doing a lot of the wrong a lot of wrong things. And if I hadn't been doing those things, I wouldn't have been around in a situation where this sort of thing can occur. And what I realized is is like nothing that I was doing was worth this. And I did a cost benefit analysis of my behavior and came up, hmm. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to do that anymore. But I think that I had the tools. You know, I I understood. I could I could choose not to do that. A lot of people they're not raised in an atmosphere where they even understand how to go about doing the right stuff. And so um, I, I think the best thing for for them in that situation is is if they have to do restitution. Oftentimes, people will help them to get a job so that they can pay people back. And as far as I'm concerned, hard work uh, covers a lot of ills. Um, you learn you learn life by doing a job. I learned I, mm -hmm. I got a job at 12 years old. I learned far more about pleasing people in, in the workplace than I ever did um, in the school that I was going to at the time. 
So your experience would back up the person who says that prison should be uncomfortable, it should be awful, it should be undesirable. The people saying that are a lot like me. Right. Um, those are those people who are, you know, haven't they haven't been to prison, but, you know, they've grown up middle class. They've uh, lived a, a you know, sort of privileged ethnic lifestyle. They don't know what it's like for other folks. So it's a lot easier to sit there and say, give them, give them hell when you don't know anything like that. And I I don't have. Uh, you know, this isn't about a, a crisis of conscience for me. I don't like convicts very much. I had to live with them for a long time, <laughs> and the vast majority of them weren't very good people. Mm -hmm. But frankly, I worked on the outside too, where there were a lot of people that weren't that great either. Um, so what this is about is getting the best results um, for our money, as far as what we're going to spend. And I think that inmates should have to pay for their own housing. The mm. people that are dangerous enough that they actually have to be kept away from other people. That, to me, is the yeah. only purpose of prison, is that somebody who's so dangerous that they can't be with other folks, then... And that would certainly bring the cost down. I mean, if that's all we're talking about, keeping in cages are people that are actually a danger to, physical danger yep. to others... Also recalcitrance. I'm willing to go after recalcitrance. So somebody steals something... And they don't care. And they refuse yeah. to make good, and then they steal more things, yeah. and they refuse to make good. Okay, a little time in the can for you might change your mind about this behavior. But I, I would like to see more compassion because there's some prisons out there that are pretty awful and they, there's no way that you could argue that they're making better people uh, when they get out of there. In fact, I've got an Ask Me Anything from Reddit that I want to share. It's a former jail employee, former corrections officer kind of speaking out about his experience. But the bigger question was how do we get from here to there? Because if, if people were to reform the, the jail system today, it would – I think it would go in a different direction. I think it would go in a more angry, uh, punish them kind of direction because that seems to be what well, people want. Well, that's what's want. going on. Right. Let's, they don't want to see TVs in there. Yeah. TV's and, a great way to educate people. Right. Pot would be a good thing to have in jails, too, from what I've I heard. I've heard prison guards tell me right. that I would like to see every inmate get a, a quarter ounce of marijuana every single week, be issued it. Just because they'd chill out and take it easy. So, you know, bringing these ideas to the table, it's important to talk about them. I'm glad we're having this discussion, and we certainly have over the years. But actually seeing some of these things implemented, we're nowhere near that right now. And what can we do to help hasten that eventuality, hasten that future that we want to see? Well, I think the Free State Project is the best answer. And if you love the ideas of liberty, and of course those ideas reach much further beyond you know, imprisoning people. Uh, the ideas of freedom, meaning you should be free to live your life how you want, so long as you don't hurt anybody else, and that you understand in order to be free, you have to allow others to be free. If you get those concepts, then go check out the Free State Project. There are over 15,500 people who have pledged to make the move to New Hampshire as part of the Free State Project and to get active to achieve liberty in our lifetime. We want to reach 20,000, so we're over 75% of the way to the ultimate goal uh, of 20,000 people, and that 20,000 will have a five-year window of time in which to move once 20,000 is reached. So we're still trying to get to that 20,000 number. You can help us with that by signing up for the Free State Project right now at freestateproject.org. Do your due diligence. Check it out. This isn't just yeah. some sort of crazy pie-in-the-sky idea. This is actually happening. There are actually people who are here. Over 1,500 are already here in the state. There are more coming every single week. You can call us and ask us questions. We'll give you our best answer. It's true. So go to freestateproject.org. There's a great document there called The 101 Reasons to Move to New Hampshire. Uh, and that's I found it very, very persuasive. It's why I moved early back in 2006. Hundreds of people, over a thousand people have moved early for the Free State Project. We've got new people coming in all the time, and it's just such a great movement full of wonderful people. If we can get the right people together with the right ideas in the same geographic area, then maybe we'll actually have a shot at seeing some of them achieved in our lifetime and seeing some more freedom come about. Freestateproject.org. We go to Dave. He's in Vegas. You're on Free Talk Live with Ian and Mark. Hey, Dave. Hey guys, I hey. wanted to uh, comment on the on the uh, prison discussion. Yes, sir. I mean I I think you guys you guys have a lot of good I ideas that you're throwing out there, and that there's a lot of things that can be done. But I think it's contingent upon you know getting rid of victimless crimes, sure, and also you know changing kind of the whole justice system. Because right now with these privatized prisons, I mean there's incentives 
for uh, them to keep the jails full. I right. think some of them even have contracts where, you know, it has to be at like a 90 percent occupancy or, you know, I, I don't know what the specifics but, are. Right, but the might private be, well, prisons just want bodies. They Just like the state prisons, they want bodies in cells so they can get money. Period. Right. And, and, and we kind of have just a prison mentality as far as, you know, you hear people talk about whatever crime and everyone's, uh, you know, most people say, oh, yeah, they should go to jail or, or whatever. I don't think most of these people have ever been to jail or, or really even think about. No way. Like, you, you know, you're and I was in jail like two and a half days and that's just for being arrested and, and waiting for bail. But I mean, you, you, they, they have to understand that, you know, you're taking away someone's freedom. So. People no, don't want to think about jail. The conditions are. You're, you're right, Dave. They don't want to think about jail. If you've got more, you can hang on. We'll bring you back here in a moment. Uh, but they don't want to think about it. I remember there was a big controversy here in Keene, New Hampshire, a few years ago when they were talking about building a new jail. The, the old jail was out in a town you know, to the west of Keene. You, know, you had to drive a half an hour to get to this old jail, and it was out in the middle of nowhere. The new jail's on a major road going into Keene, and everybody sees it. It's up there on like a little you know, hill, and it's really obvious. And people don't want to see a jail. They don't want to think about these things. More coming up. Self-reliance. Survival supplies. Survival skills. National experts. Get it all at the only free-to-attend national event exclusively for preppers. This spring in Tulsa, it's the National Preppers and Survivalist Expo. A must-be-there event. Presented by American Living. This massive expo will include special guests. David Mays from Nat Geo's Doomsday Preppers. Plus, GCN Zone Dr. Joel Wallach via live video conference. Hear Dr. Bones, Nurse Amy, and members of the American Prepper Network. Work, along with many other leading national experts. Learn life-saving tips, CPR, how to handle crisis situations, walk through a bomb shelter, and much, much more. Two big days, April 5th and 6th at the Tulsa Expo Square in Tulsa, Oklahoma. That's April 5th and 6th. Doors open at 9 a.m. with absolutely free admission. Don't miss the National Preppers and Survivalist Expo, America's largest emergency preparedness event. Get your free tickets now. NPSExpo.com. That's NPSExpo.com. Calling all makeup lovers. Bare Minerals Foundation just won its ninth Glammy Award for Best Prestige Foundation. And to celebrate, we're offering risk-free trials to all women nationwide. That's right. Every woman who calls right now can get a full-size risk-free trial of our number one selling foundation. Plus, a free five-piece makeup set. For yours, call 1-800-961-4764. This is an exclusive radio-only offer you don't want to miss. Bare Minerals Foundation gives you flawlessly beautiful coverage with a no-makeup feel. And it's clinically proven to promote clearer, healthier-looking skin for all skin types. No wonder it's won nine Glammys in a row. And now you can try it for yourself. Call now to find out how you can participate in our nationwide risk-free trial and join the millions who've already tried Bare Minerals Foundation and fallen in love with their skin again. Plus, we'll send you a free five-piece makeup set, our gift to you. Hurry, don't miss this exclusive radio-only offer. 1-800-961-4764. 1-800-961-4764. If you want to move to the free state And you're looking for some real estate Well, I know a guy who's really great It's the Realtor Mark Warden Do you want a home with 20 acres A lakeside cabin Any takers for renters Buyers and sellers too Mark Warden is the guy for you PorcupineRealEstate.com the three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Free Press Publications is an independent alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary at fpp.cc. 
as well as weekly news in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at FPPradio.com. The monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc and books at shop.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at fpp.cc. That's fpp.cc, as in Creative Commons. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can take control of the airwaves toll-free, 855-450-FREE. We're talking about prisons actually coming up. I've got the Ask Me Anything from Reddit. A former corrections officer has a lot to say about his experience inside a uh, very horrible place, a place where even he did not want to be. Uh, We'll give you uh, more information about that. You can, of course, take control of the airwaves at 855-450-FREE. And one thing that I'm sure you don't miss from prison was the prison coffee, Mark. Did you ever try that stuff? Oh, yeah. Yeah, they had. uh, Yep, I drank the prison coffee. Yeah, not so great. Nope, not so great. (laughs) There's nothing good about that. Um, Yeah, as a matter of fact, we have BuzzBox that uh, we work with here on the show. The intention is is that we're trying to get 1,000 listeners to help us to fund 100 microloans to do that they're going to buy their coffee through buzzbox now what i found out today is ian i guess i was half right and half wrong when i told you that the buzzbox microloans go towards uh funding people to get into the coffee co-op mm-hmm. so buzzbox actually has two microloan two line loans the like microloans that go into their process one's through agro which uh, this is an organization that helps people get into their coffee co-op, and then they buy the coffee um, from mm. them specifically. 100% of their coffee is uh, you know, produced in this fashion, and this is how they can call themselves sort of f- uh, fair trade. Now, many businesses that call themselves fair trade, they only have to have like 20% or some, some percentage of their coffee um, is uh, you know, done in some fashion that they call fair trade. And it's not even done in this way necessarily. Because the intention here is, is that these are small coffee farmers, not big coffee companies. Um, and you know, that's, that's the idea there. So, but second, secondarily, also, the purchase price includes microloans through World Vision, which huh. go to help people um, set up all kinds of businesses and right because I saw some of that on the coffee.freetalklive.com website right. where people were starting other businesses. And as well. I thought those were sort of uh, you know people that were in the coffee co-op that had time to mm. do other businesses while they were growing coffee, shade grown coffee, and apparently not. So this uh-huh. is double <laughs> fair trade essentially cool. coffee. Um, it's you go to coffee.freetalklive.com. Get a free pound. You sign up for the subscription. Yes, it's a subscription. And yes, you can cancel at any time. And yes, you can adjust your frequency of delivery as well. Right. And this is great coffee. You will not be disappointed in the coffee. You'll have your coffee, uh, you know, the coffee issue will be taken care of in your life. You'll have coffee delivered to you at a regular basis, the, mm, the basis, the, you know, the time, the timeliness that you want. Yeah. And it's really, it's, it's awesome to have, uh, to be involved in this program. And it's not expensive compared to other high-end coffees. Yes, if you're used to, uh, and you know, sort of grocery store coffee, um, you know, it's going to be more costly than that. But it is better, and in this case, you're helping people live better lives. Also, this coffee is significantly better for you. It's 100% organic. It's shade-grown, which means the people who get the acid reflux from coffee can drink shade-grown in many cases. It's top 1% Arabica grade. Much of the stuff that you're getting at these coffee stores, either grocery or the the coffee, um, the chain coffee uh, places, this stuff's been sitting around. It's been moldy and that kind of thing. You, you know, it's not as good as the BuzzBox Coffee at coffee.freetalklive.com. We've really been digging into the prison issue here tonight. I love it. We didn't come to the table with this topic tonight. Someone just happened to call about it, and it's led into what's been over an hour-long discussion thus far. You're welcome to add your thoughts in here at 855-450-FREE, and I think it's really useful because, as we were saying, and Dave is still with us here in Vegas. We're going to bring him back. Uh, you know, As we were saying, people don't want to think about this issue. 
If they do think about it, the thoughts are usually, punish them, punish them hard, and that's it. Then they brush it off the table, and that's the end of that. But people uh, don't want to think about prisons. They don't want to think about the the differences between the prisoners, how many of them don't belong there. You know, drug offenders, etc., these people who have not actually ever harmed another human being. These people don't belong behind bars. But people don't want to think about those discrepancies. They just, they just see prison as a place, or jail, either one, as a place for bad people. And as I was explaining... Uh, I heard some of that on local talk radio here in Keene, New Hampshire, where the main complaint about moving to this new jail, this $40 million jail that they built here, which I've spent uh, two months of my life in. For civil disobedience. Correct. Uh, The main complaint about this jail wasn't the $40 million. It was the fact that it was on a major road and that people would have to see the jail and therefore they would have to think about the fact that there is a jail and think about the kind of people that might be in that jail. All of these thoughts might cross someone's mind if they're driving down the road and they happen to see this facility on their way to and from work or to go recreate or whatever. And people didn't want that. They didn't want it. It didn't stop them from building it. But that was one of the main objections was that we don't even want to see this. We don't want to have to think about people in jail. You just put them in this place so we don't have to think or do anything about them. And I think that that's unfortunate. And I think we do need to think about these issues and really talk about them. So Dave, what else did you have to share tonight? Yeah, no, um, just that, I mean, along with what you're saying is that people don't think about it because if they did, first of all, they don't realize that, you know, you're having your freedom taken away. Never mind all the other horrible stuff about jail and how you're treated and things like that. But I mean, it, you know, try locking yourself in your bedroom for a month. I mean, you, you'd probably try go it for that. a day. And it, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but well, it depends who's in there with you, I guess. But, um, you know, you're, you're in a completely they, different they kind of prison like, than I was, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, they, they, they think uh, a lot of people will say, well, it's not, you know, jail's not tough enough. You know, and it's like, well, you're, you're having your freedom taken away. And then you have, you know, guards that are degrading you. And, and most of the people that are in jail, as you're kind of saying, are either, you know, uh, nonviolent offenders or, or even if something was a crime. A lot of crimes, you know, shouldn't even be crimes, but never mind that. Even if they they are crimes, well, which they are, but you you shouldn't be going to jail for them. Like for for even like what you did, you shouldn't be in jail for that. Even I mean, I don't even think it should be a crime, but but let's let's assume it it should be. It, should you be in jail for that? You know what I mean? Should it be something that's like a fine? If it, if it's a crime at all, yeah, well, I don't want to pay the fine either. You know, so, yeah. <laughs> you pay the fine. Right. Well, I mean, what what, what I'm saying is, my, my point being that we have a jail culture that it's like mm. let's just throw everybody in jail. Like that's the solution. Yeah, and it hasn't you know, solved for, anything for stupid crime. at all. Dave, thanks for your call and the thoughts tonight. I do appreciate it at eight fifty five four fifty free. You know, you don't start to care. I think the average person doesn't ever care about jail or think about jail uh, until it strikes close to home, until either they have been put there personally or a direct loved one, a family member, a spouse. That's uh, more and more people now. It's true. And so so more people are more likely to be uh, concerned about this, but that's really what it takes. Otherwise, it's completely off the table. People don't talk about it. It's not even an issue for them. And uh, and you're right, Mark. More victimless crimes means more people are spending time in really horrible places and coming to realize how bad things are out there. Another it is another indictment, I think, on a sort of uh, uh, you know American culture. Much of American culture, Christian. Uh, these are, these people tend to be very um, influential in their communities. Bible's very specific about visiting prisoners. Christians don't do it very often. Really, very few people do it, and. The Bible says you're not supposed to do that? No, it says you're supposed to oh, do it. Says it says you are. Okay. Right. Well, know. consider, almost every one of the disciples was in prison. Mm. You know, they were they were civil disobedience. They believed so firmly in uh, right. in their ideas that they were willing to go to jail for them. And, yeah, Christians don't see it that way any longer. Um you know, it's, they're not they're not doing oftentimes these visits to prisons. Uh, you know, these are the houses of worship for the privileged. The Christians have once again turned into the Pharisees and the Sadducees that Jesus came to speak against. I think that's just an, an, an aside. Um, but when it comes to solving the problem of uh, of incarceration, I think the first thing we have to look at is victimless crimes. Um, once you can move those off the table, you move the war on, war on drugs off the table, I think we're going to diminish 
the number of people who are even going to be incarcerated. You're going to cut it in uh, probably three quarters of the people Absolutely. won't even go to prison because lots of people go to prison to feed a drug habit. Lots and then of, they get to feed their habit while they're on the inside. <laughs> Well, Ironically yeah, enough. There's not as many drugs in prison as, as you would like to believe, Ian. But they are available if you have the money. If you've got the money. So uh, we'll come back with more. In fact, next, I'll get to, unless your calls certainly come first here at 855-450-FREE. But otherwise, we've got coming up the jail guard, the co- corrections officer, who is speaking out on Reddit. We'll share that with you coming up here in moments. This is Free Talk Live. Everybody wants to know. What can you buy with bitcoins? Isn't there like a Bitcoin general store or something? Well, yes, now there is, and it's at bitcoingeneralstore.com. BitBrew and the Bees Brothers have teamed up to create a place where U.S. customers in the lower 48 can shop for, well, anything, with free shipping. What can you find at bitcoingeneralstore.com? Bitcoin apparel, stickers, gifts, precious metals, physical bitcoins, coffee and honey, of course, and electronics and computer accessories. The folks at Bitcoin General Store are true Bitcoin believers who don't even use third-party payment processors. They get their inventory direct with Bitcoin and pass on the savings to you. Shop at BitcoinGeneralStore.com with confidence that you are supporting a real Bitcoin economy. you got to see what they have to offer. Visit BitcoinGeneralStore.com today. That's BitcoinGeneralStore.com. You've been lied to. Lied to by corrupt Washington politicians and the Wall Street propaganda machine. My name is Brett Kitchen, and I want to give you a free copy of my Inc. Magazine best-selling book, Safe Money Millionaire, because Wall Street's 401k and other investment plans have failed millions of Americans. After losing 35% in my IRA in the crash several years ago, I said enough. Since then, I've discovered an IRS-approved way to safely grow my money up to 12 to even 17%, cut taxes dramatically, but also have my money protected when the next crash comes. Call now to talk with a specialist to discover this little-known strategy to potentially build a million-dollar tax-free retirement income, get potential 12 to 17% returns, and never lose when the next crash hits. Call 888-885-8820 and discover this tool that people like Walt Disney and J.C. Penney used to safely grow rich. Plus, get one of just 97 free books left. We even cover shipping and handling. Call 888-885-8820. 888-885-8820. Again, that's 888-885-8820. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of... Where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on, joined the Free State Project, and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because... I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your AMP will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. Thanks to Bitcoin, LRN.FM is able to provide our free-to-air satellite channel across North and Central America. You can listen to LRN.FM 24-7 via satellite for no monthly cost. Learn more about our satellite channel at sat.lrn.fm. And if you'd like to help us continue to expand, you can send us Bitcoins via the address you'll find under the Bitcoin graphic in the right column of LRN.FM. To learn more about Bitcoin, visit weusecoins.com. That's weusecoins.com. Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit promote.lrn.fm for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.lrn.fm. This is 
Free Talk Live. Take control, toll free here, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And Skype us at username lrn.fm. So feel free to reach out to us in that way if you prefer. In fact, I prefer it. If you've got the choice, go ahead and Skype into the show. We will get you on the air and you'll sound better most always uh, than if you're on the phone. Unless there's something wrong with your internet connection, that could really ruin it for Skype. So don't be torrenting in the background with like sucking up your whole upstream bandwidth. But otherwise, you'll be good. Anyway, our Skype username, lrn.fm, send a contact request. We will accept it, and then it'll be easy for you to connect with us from that point forward. Plus, it's easy for you to connect with Free Talk Live archives. Just go and click and download. They're yours right there on the front page. You get the last seven days worth right there easily accessible on the front page. And if you want to go back further, you can just click over into our archives, the MP3 archives section. And that goes back to late 2006. In addition to our audio archives, we're now doing video archiving of Free Talk Live on our YouTube channel. You can go to youtube.freetalklive.com to access that real quick and easy. And then you can watch the last couple weeks worth of the show it's relatively new we're doing this you know it's a new thing for us uh doing video archiving we've been doing video live during the show for a a few years but uh, actually archiving those videos and saving them onto youtube so you can go and access them anytime and watch us picking our nose or doing whatever it is that we're doing on video because we're usually not thinking about the fact that the cams are on uh you can do that what happened to you today because i i don't think that happens to me no, I, I don't know. I'm sure it's. I'm sure it's happened at some point. Somebody's the, gonna need a freeze frame of that. The, the, that's what I'm saying. There's all kinds of interesting freeze frames now. Uh, you know, because you ever done that, Mark? Where you play back a video and just freeze a frame and just watch yourself make ridiculous faces, even though you didn't intend to. I now our I listeners can do that to stopped us. Stopped videos and looked yeah. at that. Yeah. Okay. So you can do that now. Uh, YouTube.freetalklive.com. Go there and check that out. So you can take control of the airwaves at 855-450-FREE. We're going to go to the phones and your thoughts, or actually in this case to Skype, where uh, Mike is on with us here, and it's actually State Representative Mike Sylvia here in New Hampshire. He's a Free State Project participant. Hey, Mike. Hey, good evening. Hey, welcome. uh, We had some fun today down at the State House. uh, Stopped another bad gun bill. Tell us about it. Um, This was... uh, an interesting case. A couple of weeks ago, we had uh, HP 1589, which was a gun background check, which was uh, really horrible. And because we killed that one, they decided, the sponsor of that bill decided that they would attach essentially the same bill as an amendment to a different bill, in fact, sponsored by a gun supporter. So they attached it to that, which was very much against the rules. But doesn't matter because they have the majority. So we fought it again today. And, Who has uh, the majority? And in, in the the House is a Democratic majority. Yeah, I guess it is. And well, yeah. Well, you know, the statists have the majority, but that much uh, is true. Yes, the Democrats in in this particular case are in control. But uh, we managed to stop a bad uh, gun bill from getting through today. Excellent. And there was an interesting. Uh, unexpected debate on tanning for um, people under the age of 18. Yeah, this is uh, an interesting one, really. It really was. And uh, the ending of uh, that particular debate was particularly good. Uh, So a big fight turned out on this, and they wanted to make sure that children or young people under the age of 18 could not go get themselves tanned. Which could be a problem if you're going on vacation to Florida and you're going to be out in some pretty harsh sun. You might want to get a little bit of pre-tanning done. So in the end, after a lot of fighting back and forth, which was kind of unexpected, uh, at the very last moment, uh, Steve Allencourt, uh, one of our uh, really great speakers, he, he really throws it out there sometimes and it's, uh, it's great to, and entertaining to listen to him. He made the point at the very end, as they were making a motion to indefinitely postpone debate, he made the point that if this were to pass, it would be legal for someone under 18 to get an abortion, but they could not tan. Right. A 14-year-old would be able to get an abortion in New Hampshire without parental (laughs) consent, but would not be able to get a tan with parental consent. Yeah, it's just crazy, and uh, the uh, indefinite postponement is like the uh, the crushing uh, tabling yeah, of it's all, over. all kinds. It's Great really, news. It's, really, it's, it's over, and it can't be brought back up again. Cool. At least not this session, right? It could be brought up in two years. 
Yeah, uh, yeah, it could, but it, it kind of sends the message that this is really, really bad. So, uh, well, excellent. Yeah. Thank you for the legislative update, Mike. Was there anything else you wanted to share? You're welcome. Well, I've uh, I've been to the uh, Cheshire County Jail, and uh, I was not um, one of their inmates. I was uh, a guest and uh, took the tour of the place, and uh, it's huge and uh, tremendously oversized. It's crazy. It is, uh, but it's a, a lot of worse places you could be kept than the the Cheshire County Jail. That's for sure. Hey, well, um, it's nice. Yeah, go ahead. It's nice accommodations, but it really doesn't need to be that monstrously big. I agree, and it's usually full of people who don't belong in uh, behind bars. Mike, thanks for your call tonight. I appreciate hearing from you at uh, eight fifty five. 450 free and also our Skype LRN.FM. Could you hear the squealing behind him? I heard like little noises. Yeah, I, I don't think it went out over most of our radio stations, but there's sometimes a, you know, sometimes Skype has some issues. But anyway, we'll take your calls about whatever's on your mind. We got the uh, corrections officer, former corrections officer. Any any thoughts though, Mark, on the how did you on the know Cheshire. about the tanning thing? Were you watching that? On uh, I watch the, the news. Unlike yourself, I pay attention. I listen to the I listen to the radio. Uh -huh. Is mostly how I get my news. But yeah, that's I heard about that. So um, one thing I was thinking of as far as the Cheshire County Jail, I read a book one point uh, about castles and uh, dungeons and these sorts of things. And basically they had to have some prisoners. So this is the, the assumption because I can't see how people would necessarily know what, uh, you know, counts and dukes were thinking in the past. But, y you know, you had a dungeon and a castle. You just had to have some prisoners. So they just had people in there. And it's kind of like, you know, you build the prison big enough and you just got to put people in the beds. Mm-hmm. So, to the story from Ask Me Anything on Reddit. Now, for those of you who don't know, Reddit is a social bookmarking website. We have actually integrated Reddit onto the front page over at freetalklive.com, meaning that you can submit content and vote as to whether you like or dislike that content. So, if you find something that you think is interesting, that you think will think is interesting, that you think our audience will appreciate, you can submit it over at freetalklive.com. You have to have a Reddit account in order to do that. And you link your Reddit account into our, your Free Talk Live account, and it's a very short process. only takes a moment. And at that point, you'll be good to go for submitting content to the front page of our website, where it can be voted up or voted down. In fact, if you go to freetalklive.com right now, you'll see... As you scroll down the page, all the content that was created by listeners like you. The number one story, even though it's not the top voted story, I don't know how they figure this stuff out. But the number one story right now is the future of robbery. Below that, Edward Snowden's TED Talk, which I have not yet taken the time to watch. But I it need has to watch been, that too. It has been highly recommended. In fact, it is the most voted story on our front page with uh, a bunch of votes. So you can go to freetalklive.com and you can see and get interactive in that way. But one of the things they do on Reddit... And, and on Reddit, there's different subreddits, as they're called. So different interests have their own subreddit. So Free Talk Live has a subreddit. Right. This one is the Ask Me Anything subreddit. But subreddits can also do Ask Me Anything. The idea is that uh, there are certain people who people are interested in asking questions of. So, you know, a, a celebrity, for instance, uh, a newsmaker of some sort. Or in this case, someone you've never heard of, but you might be very, very interested in what they have to in say. In their job. Right. Uh, so this person worked at a jail and he writes this and by the way ask me any things you have to prove who you are you can't just be somebody who claims yeah i worked at a jail and then make a bunch of stuff up you actually have to show some evidence of your claims to the people who are to the, whom to the people who administrate the ask me anything forum okay so the idea being here this is not bunk that this person is a legit former corrections officer i didn't doubt him for a moment have you read this no, there's just no shortage of people who are <laughs> okay. ex-correctional officers. So, here we go. I saw horrific beatings happen at his jail almost every day. No, no, people didn't get beaten. They were uh, they fell up the stairs. I saw inmates being beat senseless for not moving fast enough. I saw inmates urinate on themselves because they had been chained up for hours and officers refused to let them use the bathroom. This didn't happen because they were busy. This happened because it was fun. I saw an old man be beat bad enough to be taken to the hospital because he didn't respond to a verbal order right after he took out his hearing aids, which he was ordered to do. I was fired after I caught the beating of a triple amputee, you read that right, on video, and I got seven officers fired for brutality. Don't believe me? 
Here's a still from the video. This is one second of over 14 minutes of this poor man being beaten with a mop handle, kicked, punched, and thrown around. As you can see in the video, he's down in the left-hand corner, naked and cowering, while being sprayed with pepper spray and surrounded by uniformed agents. We'll come back with uh, the rest of his story, what happened to him and why he finally left this horrifying position. Corrections officer. 855-450 free. We'll tell that coming up here in hour three. Plus, good news for cannabis patients. Meowbit is free software from the Freedom Fiends that allows you to effortlessly view .bit websites. Meowbit works on all browsers. .bit is a new type of web address that's not controlled by any government or corporation. And we'll show you how to register a .bit domain today using a few cents worth of name coin. If anyone ever shuts down your .com website, users will still be able to get to your site using your .bit address in our free software, Meowbit. Go to meowbit.com. That's M-E-O-W-B-I-T.com. Hey, this is Guy Fieri. Now, when your recipe calls for red peppers, chili powder, garlic, and onions, you got the start of some awesome chili and maybe some heartburn. If that's the case, roll out the Rolaids liquid. Don't let heartburn keep you from enjoying the things you love. New Rolaids liquid gets you back in the action fast. Even when your worst heartburn symptoms flare up, Rolaids liquid dual active formula coats and soothes for rapid relief. New Rolaids liquid in your choice of mint or cherry. Use as directed. R-O-L-A-I-D-S. Now that's how you spell relief. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. Radio VR. Good morning and welcome to Radio VR. We're broadcasting live from Washington, D.C. and around the world on voiceofrussia.com slash U.S. I'm Kate Zickel. And I'm Rick Young. Today is Wednesday, March 19th, 2014. Radio VR News. With a deadline looming at the end of the month, the Obama administration is pushing hard to get young people to sign up for health care coverage by highlighting the prevalence of sports-related injuries to them. Correspondent Jerry Bolander has the details. With March Madness set to begin, the administration is putting on a full-court press to convince people to sign up for insurance. A new government report says nearly 2 million people got emergency room treatment for sports-related injuries in 2012. And White House Press Secretary Jay Carney says without insurance, even a simple injury can cost a lot. Treatment for a sprained ankle could cost over $2,000. Injury rates were highest for children and young adults under age 25. The latter a group whose participation in the health care law is critical to its success. Jerry Bodlander, Washington. <laughs> President Obama has awarded the nation's highest military honor to 24 veterans in a rare ceremony. National Security Correspondent Sagar Magani reports from the Pentagon. This ceremony is 70 years in the making. The president called it a chance to set the record straight as he presented the Medal of Honor to two dozen veterans. Some of these soldiers fought and died for a country that did not always see them as equal. Specialist for Leonard L. Alvarado. They're black, Jewish, Hispanic, and after fighting in World War II, Korea, and Vietnam, the government realized they'd been bypassed because of discrimination. Only three are still alive. As one family member has said, this is long overdue. Sagar Megani at the Pentagon. The Oklahoma Court of Criminal Appeals has rescheduled two executions to allow state prison officials more time to find a supply of drugs for lethal injections. But as correspondent Bailey Elise McBride reports, 
Oklahoma Corrections officials have been quiet on their prospects of acquiring the drugs or switching the method of execution. They haven't said anything about what other potential drugs they might consider using, where they would obtain those from, or if they would have to result to other methods. But they would have to have lethal injection ruled unconstitutional in Oklahoma District Court, which they would probably then appeal before they would move to other methods of execution, which would first be electrocution and then firing squad if electrocution was found unconstitutional. Oklahoma law allows for alternative forms of execution if lethal injection is found to be unconstitutional. In other news, correspondent Tim McGuire has the latest on a fatal television news helicopter crash near the famous Space Needle in Seattle. Christopher Reynolds watched as a KOMO TV news helicopter tried to lift off from the roof of the station's building in Seattle. Reynolds says it tilted just five feet or so above the building and then... Looked like he was trying to correct it, landed back down, something wrong, and he just went for a dive down. Dead are the pilot and a photographer who worked for years at KOMO before joining the helicopter leasing company. Seattle Mayor Ed Murray says the families and station staff are in mourning. As you can imagine, they are in a state of shock, and they are devastated. I'm Tim McGuire. The Obama administration is hoping to fight global warming with the power of numbers, maps, and game-type simulations. Correspondent Shirley Smith reports. The idea is that with the localized data, private companies and local governments can help the public understand the climate risks that they face, especially in coastal areas where flooding is a big issue. The government's also working with several high-tech companies such as Google, Microsoft, and Intel to come up with tools to make communities more resilient in dealing with weather extremes. These would include computer simulations for people to use so they could see what would happen with rising seas and other warming scenarios. Shirley Smith, Washington. The Federal Reserve has entered the Janet Yellen era with the new federal chair running her first meeting with federal policymakers. Correspondent David Melendi reports Yellen is expected to maintain the course set by predecessor Ben Bernanke. Most analysts expect Yellen to continue the Fed's tapering of its economic stimulus program, trimming bond purchases by another $10 billion. Some economic data have shown some weakness this year that could give the Fed pause, but on Capitol Hill last month, Yellen dismissed it. Unseasonably cold weather has played some role in much of that. So with the economic fundamentals remaining sound, the Fed also is expected to keep interest rates at a record low near zero. What will be a change, though, is the news conference following the meeting. It'll be Yellen's first as head of the Fed. David Melendi, Washington. And that's the news for Radio VR in Washington. Seniors thunder into a local high school parking lot like coalition forces entering Baghdad. A substitute teacher just needs to make it to her car before breaking down in tears. And a college freshman tells his roommate there's no need to hide his masturbation from him. And now a week in review that truly requires no introduction. The nation's students announced this week that they have reluctantly agreed to give the American education system yet another chance, saying they hope educators keep their promises of smaller class size, better school supplies, and intensified efforts to raise the country's international math ranking. The nation's students vowed to give the education system one more shot, despite claiming to have been burned many, many times in the past. In other news, a man overcomes alcoholism without the help of Jesus, and an outcast student and a lonely teacher have begun a somewhat endearing sexual relationship. And that was a free lesson in top-shelf journalism. For more news, videos, and reminders of your insignificance, visit theonion.com slash newsbeat. This is the Onion News Network. Free Talk Live, and you can bring up whatever's on your mind as we launch here into the third hour of the program. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Cannabis, has it cured cancer? We'll give you one person's story here, a very little person, as a matter of fact. We'll share that with you coming up. Uh, also, your calls about whatever's on your mind. For those of you just tuning in, we've had a long conversation tonight about the prison system, how it can be changed in a way to be more compassionate and more rehabilitative towards people who actually belong in a prison, people that are actually violent towards others, which of course eliminates the majority of people behind bars because most people are there for not having harmed somebody else. They're for a drug crime, for instance, which of course is not actually a crime because there's no victim. So we've talked about you know different ways to approach that and how can we get from here to there. 
feel free to uh, check out the archives at freetalklive.com later to get that conversation if you weren't tuned in. But we have moved into and just barely scratched the surface of a an Ask Me Anything. And I'm only going to read the initial post because there are something like 3,000 comments on this post, 3,600-some comments. These Ask Me Anythings on Reddit, how long do they last? Usually it's, I think, 24 hours. Okay. But I could be wrong about that. I mean, I, I imagine if when I did it, it was 24 hours. I did one on an anarcho-capitalist group. But um, and I was traveling at the time, so I was like on an airplane, and I was able to easily sit in front of a computer and answer stuff. Um, I imagine with a, some sort of superstar, you know, I think they've got uh, Seth MacFarlane and Jeff Goldblum are coming up on the main Ask Me Anything channel mm-hmm. on Reddit. I don't imagine they're doing much more than an hour or two. But honestly, I don't, I don't know for sure. Um, but there are over three thousand comments here, so obviously we're only going to read his initial post, and then we'll link to it over on our Facebook and Google Plus and Twitter, and you can dig in to all the questions that he gets. Because the idea is, if you ask me anything, is you can ask them anything, and they'll hopefully give you an honest answer. So this guy's a former corrections officer, and he says he's seen horrific beatings happen every day. He's seen uh, a triple amputee being beaten. And he was fired after outing the officers who beat that particular triple amputee. He says, after I was fired, I sued the sheriff's office and the board of county commissioners, and I settled the night before trial. I consider every penny that I got blood money, but I did get a letter of recommendation hand signed by the sheriff himself, and I flat out refused to sign a non-disclosure agreement. One of my biggest regrets in life is not taking that case to trial, but I just emotionally couldn't do it. Man, it is, it, it's draining. It takes years sometimes, certainly months, sometimes years to get something to trial. And then, um, you, you know, the, that's, that's the whole purpose of this stuff. If you wanted justice, if the justice system wanted justice, these things would happen much more quickly. I also regret not going to the press immediately with what I had as it happened. I want someone to finally listen about what goes on in that jail. Instead of going to the press, I decided to speak with attorneys and help inmates who were beaten and murdered by detention officers in the jail. You know, I, I it's the nightly news, which is, uh, you know, they go hand in hand with this whole prison industrial complex. They scare the bejesus out of everybody. <laughs> is, is there poison in your water? Are there pe- dangerous people <laughs> lurking out inside of your doorstep? You know, this is what they do. This is what they sell. I think that people would be cheering it on if he went to the press. In the last five years, you mean cheering on the beatings? Yeah. In the last five years, I have been deposed twice, and I have been flown across the planet three times to be deposed or to testify in cases against the sheriff. I've also been consulted by four or five other attorneys with cases against the sheriff. Every single time my name has been brought up, with one exception, the case has settled within a few months at the most. The record is two weeks. Some of those have gag orders on them and are sealed. So I can't discuss the ones that are under an order like that. But not all of them are like that. Let's talk about the two most recent cases that I've been involved in. Christopher Beckman was an inmate. He was brought in on a DUI or something like that. He wasn't a career criminal. He was a guy like you or your buddy or your dad who effed up and did something stupid while drunk. He had a seizure in the jail because he was epileptic and didn't get his medications. During the seizure, he was hogtied and ran head first. I don't think he did that on his own. He was run head first into a two-inch thick steel door, concrete walls, and elevator doors. His skull was crushed, and he died a few days later. I was deposed in his case, and very soon afterward, the family, uh, the family settled for an undisclosed amount of money other than the one million. And I promise you this: they didn't get enough. The officers that did that to them, one of them pled out for a year in jail, and the other got nothing. Another inmate, Donna uh, Dion McKinney, she's the toughest woman on this planet. If you can do, um, if you can go into a job where you can do this kind of thing to people, for one, what does it do to you? What does it do to your psyche? Now, I'm not saying I hate prison guards. I met a lot of nice prison guards. A lot of people I. I really, really like, but. Consider for a second what kind of people this job can draw. Mm -hmm. And I'd say about 25% of them are sick, twisted psychopaths to some level or another. Now, that's just me coming up Mm -hmm. with a number um, in my experience. 
and it's easy, you know, it's it's easy to beat up on and be uh, vicious to a hated group, and that's what convicts are. So they can get away with this kind of stuff. I think it's interesting to note that there aren't any movies where prison guards are the heroes. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Everybody comes up with Green Mile. He's not a hero. He's just mm-hmm. things are happening to him. He's the protagonist. Mm-hmm. That doesn't make him the hero. There's, uh, you know, Sylvester Stallone in Lockdown. There was a, you know, there have been some good prison guards who kind of step above their their uh, situation and and do the right thing. Certainly, I think movies portray prison guards, in fact, worse than I would think prison guards should be portrayed. But they have a system for kind of, you know, keeping the ones that would uh, tell, you know, snitch like this guy did. They have they have ways of keeping them off to their the, themselves, and the, the real psychopaths tend to group up together, and do their sure. thing. No one takes uh, the sheriff to trial in o- O.K. County and wins. It hasn't happened in a civil case since the 1970s, from what I understand. Dion was brutally beaten in the jail in May of 2003. And I testified in this case earlier this month. He then links to a news article about it. Why do I live so far away? I fear for my life. I left Oklahoma in March of 2010 after I turned over every piece of evidence that I had to the feds. Oklahoma is the um, executing estate in the union. Mm -hmm. They do more executions in that state per capita than any other state. When I have been flown in, I've been in and out in two days for depositions. But for the trial, I had to be there for almost a week. I spent four days barricaded in my best friend's house. When I left my family in Oklahoma after testifying a few weeks ago, I knew I'd never be able to see them in Oklahoma again. And flights, to me, are not cheap. And then he provides an absolutely scathing report from the Department of Justice about the Oklahoma County Jail in 2008 says, I did a great interview with the Moral Courage Project, and the last case I agreed to be involved with won at a jury trial. I am ecstatic. Now I can talk about the real problems going on, the thin blue line, or any other questions that you might have. And then you can go on and uh, and read as you will. I will provide this link to you to give you, because it it's going to take you time to pour over this Ask Me Anything to really dig out what this guy has to say. But think about how scary that is. He's afraid to even be in Oklahoma, certainly in Oklahoma County there. Uh, he doesn't even want to be there. He barricaded himself in his friend's house. Why do you think that is? Because the truth, telling the truth can be a dangerous thing. It can be a very dangerous thing. The sheriff runs the jail is what's why. And so the sheriff has men on the inside of the jail and on the outside of the jail. It's not just that he's afraid of the corrections officers coming after him. He's afraid of anybody driving a sheriff's vehicle inside Oklahoma and maybe even beyond that. You know, connections to police departments and things like that. They're all the buddy-buddy, the thin blue line, the good old boy network. I mean, if he's a if he's a known person amongst the sheriff's deputies in that uh, in that county, living in that town could be deadly. Yeah, they're going to be on the lookout for him, either to uh, really give him a hard time or possibly murder him and throw him in a ditch somewhere. You don't think they would? Who's going to investigate the crime? The sheriff. Eight fifty five four fifty free that is the toll-free number. I'm going to post this link on our social bookmarking site so you can check that out at your leisure. Let's go to something a little more positive. How about a cancer survivor? How about a cancer survivor who beat cancer ostensibly by using cannabis? And she's not very tall. In fact, she's not very old. We'll give you more information about her here in a few moments. Free Talk Live. I want to share something important that will not only improve your life, but the lives of many others as well. And all you need to do is drink coffee. I'm not talking about harmful store-bought or chain coffee. No, this is truly the best of the best coffee. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer BuzzBox. With every purchase, 10% goes towards our efforts to give the gift of human freedom by providing at least 100 microfinance loans via World Vision. So literally, just one cup at a time, you're having an impact and helping make a difference in the world and one sip will have you buzzing to family and friends to prove just how good it is we're giving a free pound of coffee to everyone in the audience all you do is cover shipping go to coffee.freetalklive.com buzzbox coffee is organic so it contains no pesticides or toxins it's shade grown so less acidity and no heartburn it's top one percent arabica grade and gives people the opportunity to own their own coffee farms join us in making a huge impact at coffee.freetalklive.com Hi, this is Mark Edge, host of Free Talk Live. 
we've been witnessing a meltdown of the very economic engine that powers this country. With a printing press tethered to Washington politicians, bureaucrats, and central bankers, how can we put our trust in paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Come see gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold. With Washington, D.C. delivering more debt and printed promises, common sense tells us the future of the trend is obvious. Everyone listening should visit gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938. I trust Midas Resources for my gold, silver, platinum, and you can too. Again, I want you to have this book, and it's free. It's gold.freetalklive.com or 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. For over 12 years, Halverson Enterprises CEO Peter Weathers has taken a hands-on approach in all aspects of the tech firm's growth and day-to-day -day business. But employees say the executive's true talent lies in his unique ability to recognize great ideas and then absolutely ruin them. For as long as I've worked here, Peter has been able to sit down in a meeting, listen to a million different ideas, pick out the one that makes the most sense creatively and financially, and then totally destroy it until there's basically nothing worthwhile about it left. He's remarkable. Employees through Throughout the company say they're most impressed by Weathers' ability to water down promising ideas with meaningless jargon, consistently choose the wrong person to head up every project, and inject virtually every halfway decent thought with his own short-sighted and terrible insights. At our all-hands meeting the other week, our team put forth a very feasible plan to boost productivity, and it was really incredible to see Peter's mind at work, just taking every good aspect of our proposal and dismantling it like a small child. This is the Onion News Network. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. Are you looking for camping, hunting, survival, or shooting gear? ManVentureOutpost.com carries the name brands you want at the lowest prices. Ammunition, knives, firearm accessories, archery, air guns, scopes, binoculars, laser sights, tactical flashlights, fish finders, and boating equipment. ManVentureOutpost.com is family owned and has the lowest prices. Go check it for yourself. Get it quick. Get it from ManVentureOutpost.com. Now buy firearms at ManVentureOutpost.com. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at LRN.FM. Free Talk Live, take control of the airwaves, toll-free, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We've got Skype as well. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. Feel free to connect in the way that you feel is most appropriate. We're here to take your calls about anything. We've been talking a lot about prisons uh, tonight. You don't have to talk about that to get on the air here on Free Talk Live. You can also join us online. Just go to freetalklive.com. Sign up for our emailed updates and uh, get hooked up with a new Free Talk Live weekly digest. It's a summary of the most popular stories as voted by listeners like you, as submitted by listeners like you, to our website. You get a summary of those in the weekly email. Plus, you'll get a link to our uh, weekly digest audio file, which is being put together by one of our listeners, Benjamin Bartholomew, who is doing a great job with essentially compressing 21 hours worth of Free Talk Live down into about an hour and 15 minutes every single week. So you get those linked to you. Uh, no, that's in, like compressing the 21 hours down to an hour and 15 minutes, because that'd be going really fast. Like that's um, no. what, in fact, he's doing is just taking what he considers it's to be highlights. the best segments. Yeah, Highlights reel. So you can go uh, and sign up for that over at news.freetalklive.com. There are also links to our Facebook, Google+, and Twitter uh, there, so you can follow us in those ways if you prefer. Just drop on by news.freetalklive.com. Having grown up working at a comic book store, I spent a lot of time talking with people about sort of what the greatest superpower is. And, you know, after 
after having this, I remember this one particular instance where, uh, you know, everybody was, t- there was a bunch of people, probably 15 people talking about this. And the we were going around asking people what they thought. And I thought that a really great answer was this guy who said the ability to read and control minds. The closest thing that we have to that today is the ability to speak persuasively. If you can speak persuasively, you really can be very effective in what it is that you do. Now, if you are like Free Talk Live and you want to spread the ideas of liberty, this is extraordinarily valuable. There's uh, good news. It's uh, There's 70 years of shi- science that shows that even the best leaders can get better, but only if they practice ways of persuasion that actually work. Dr. Matt Barney, founder of LeaderAmp, has coached and taught thousands of successful leaders around the world for the last 20 years using the latest science that that works. Dr. Barney has drafted blueprints for a new smartphone application to measure each person and tailor a, tailor a customized developmental plan um, which will be pushed out to your to your smartphone for you particularly. And his vision is to build a community who can access approaches that really work, support each other's development in these areas, and uniquely it'll also have uh, the ability for you to compare yourself to leadership qualities of famous individuals like Gandhi or Steve Jobs so that you can see that they weren't, re- they weren't perfect but they did work on filling in the gaps that they had. So the app isn't ready yet. It's being built. But if you want to help advance an approach to grow freedom, um, lovers' ability to, to persuade people, we'd love for you to join the community. Feel free to pre-order on Indiegogo at leaderamp.freetalklive.com. You can amp your leadership with leaderamp.freetalklive.com. So the story is coming from uh, it's again a few different sources. The main website is bravemikayla.com. That's Mykayla, M-Y-K-A-Y-L-A. Activistpost.com has the story that uh, was published on Friday. Oregon's youngest medical cannabis patient is now cancer-free. And she's pretty young. I would say she's probably, according to the blog here, one of her mother's posts, uh, she said she had the her, the healthiest child for seven years. So I guess that's when uh, things started to go wrong. So I'm going to guess she's no older than eight or nine at this point. Um, so the story from Activist Post, pediatric cannabis therapy is saving children. Awareness is the most important thing at this moment. The anti-tumor effects of cannabinoids and THC have been demonstrated for quite some time now. In the 1980s, cannabinoid receptors were discovered in the human brain, which made it obvious that our body has to synthesize something that binds to these receptors. Our bodies produce these compounds in our own endocannabinoid system, which is now known to be responsible for a number of biological functions. And this is why the plant, cannabis, has such a wide therapeutic potential for multiple diseases, including cancer. Numerous studies have demonstrated time and time again the anti-tumor effects of cannabis, and they have shown that cannabis completely kills cancer cells and has a great impact on rebuilding the immune system. Cannabis now, has, this isn't every form of cancer, right? Uh, I don't know, Mark. I can't answer. I'm not a doctor. I have okay. not done that level of, uh, of research, but it certainly has uh, been some, some interesting studies that have been done on, on cannabis. It has the potential to replace a multitude of pharmaceutical drugs, and it remains a mystery as to why human trials are not underway. Well, you're going to have to ask the DEA about that one because they are the ones who are in control of whether or not any research can be done on any Schedule 1, 2, or 3 uh, narcotics. And usually their answer is uh, no. If you're looking for these studies, I've put multiple links in this article for you to research. We'll link to you this article, and you can do your own research at your leisure. But there was actually another story recently that, you know, if we get a chance, we'll share with you, where Sanjay Gupta, who is a kind of a big-name medical correspondent for CNN, he has come out in favor of medical cannabis. He's changed his mind, and now there's a new article from him about how he's doubling down on medical cannabis. But anyway, in the United States, back to activistpost.com, there are only two approved treatments for cancer uh, via the FDA, and that is radiation and chemotherapy. 
Now, scientists have discovered that chemotherapy fuels cancer growth and kills the patient more quickly, yet nothing has been changed. Both are extremely toxic to the human body, and thanks to a growing awareness with regards to cannabis and its high rate of success with individuals choosing to use it as a cancer treatment, more people are starting to realize the healing power of this plant. Coupled- it seems like if you've got cancer, like what's the worst case scenario smoking marijuana? You know, you might as well give that a shot, right? Well, in this case, uh, what you'll find out about this young lady, uh, her name again is uh, Michaela. She's not smoking it, actually. They're mm-hmm. using cannabis oil with her. It's kind of a different uh, delivery method. So is it uh, mind-altering? Um, well, that's a good question, I, and I don't have the answer for you up front. I do know that they claim that sh- her behavior changed uh, when she was on it, that she was smiling and laughing more and that uh, she was able to actually eat so whether it's mind altering, I've seen people a, smile and laugh on marijuana. Yeah, whether it's mind altering in a bad way, um, that's up to you to decide. So thanks to the growing awareness uh, with cannabis and more people using it successfully for cancer treatment, more people are realizing that it's uh, it's an amazing drug. Com- coupled with all of the success stories, are hundreds of scientific studies that prove that cannabis can kill cancer. It's really becoming a no brainer. Now, when you're an adult with cancer, you have the choice to use the two recommended options or refuse treatment and select alternative methods. When you're a child, however, your parents do not have the option to refuse the approved way without facing legal repercussions, which can include losing custody of your child. Mm. Brave Michaela had T-cell acute lymphoblastic leukemia. Sounds really awful. It's a very rare and aggressive form of childhood leukemia. So as, as if it weren't bad enough to have childhood leukemia, this is now a worse version of that very same thing. It accounts for 15 to 18% of childhood leukemia cases, and her DNA was altered in some way, and it caused her bone marrow to start producing leukemia white blood cells. She fell ill in May of 2012, and in July of that year, doctors discovered a basketball-sized mass of lymphoblasts in her chest. Jeez. Her mass was so large, she was not able to be sedated for risk of death from the pressure on her esophagus and heart. We'll tell you more about her story in moments. If you owe the IRS back taxes, listen carefully. Sweeping changes to IRS policies will help more people than ever eliminate their tax debts once and for all. And now, thanks to Dan Pillow, you can get the tax help you need to end your tax nightmare. Hi, I'm Dan Pilla. I've helped thousands of people reduce or eliminate tax debts they couldn't pay. And after more than 30 years of experience dealing with the IRS, I can tell you there's no such thing as a hopeless tax case. With the IRS's new policies, it's easier than ever to put your tax debt behind you once and for all. Call now at 800-346-6829 to learn how I can help you. You know your IRS debt will not go away by itself, but you don't have to live in fear anymore. Call 800-346-6829. Learn how I can help you eliminate wage and bank levies, release tax liens, and negotiate a settlement with the IRS that will put your tax nightmare behind you forever. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. Or go to my website, TaxHelpOnline.com. That's TaxHelpOnline.com. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keene is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keene is the Liberty Media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more all originating here. Though, it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. Mindthings.com is a fun online game that pits you against people around the world to mine for scarce resources. Do business in a capitalist economy with virtually mined gold, tax-free, It doesn't require a big time commitment. Your little mining robot guy works whether you're logged in or not. It costs nothing to play, but you can buy bonuses. They even accept bitcoins. Go to MineThings.com, use coupon code FTL, and double your mining speed. It's free. MineThings.com. 
If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Uncovering the secrets and exposing the lies. That's what the readers of freedomsphoenix.com get every day. Freedomsphoenix.com constantly providing the information, the real news about government policies, and the real relationship we all have with the coercive government. The real condition of the economy, innovations in technology, breakthroughs in energy, health, and computer science. Learn the truth well before it's admitted to in the lamestream media. The corporate media, nothing more than distributors of government propaganda, but now there's an alternative. Freedomsphoenix.com. Constant news updates on the issues that affect your life in the most important ways. With liberty and property under constant attack, FreedomsPhoenix.com provides the understanding behind the propaganda, and it encourages the participation of its readers. Go to FreedomsPhoenix.com. That's Freedoms with an S. Phoenix.com. FreedomsPhoenix.com. The revolution between the ears has already happened. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and you can bring up whatever you want toll-free here, talking about cannabis possibly treating cancer. The article here at Activist Post certainly believes that cannabis cures cancer. They cite some studies that they say prove their claim. I think that's probably something that uh, is up for debate. But nonetheless, uh, the story that we're sharing with you is about a young girl. She's maybe nine, probably more like eight. She was seven in the summer of 2012. And uh, that was when she was diagnosed with an absolutely horrifying sounding condition, not just childhood leukemia, but uh, lymphoblastic, acute lymphoblastic leukemia. And we'll tell you more about what happened uh, with her and how she's doing today here in a few moments. But I also want to tell you how to get Bitcoins. Yeah, you go to cashintocoins.com. Bitcoins are all in the news right now. But it, a lot of people don't know how to get them. It's not the easiest thing in the world to get Bitcoins. Cashintocoins.com makes it easy for you. The instructions there are clear. Uh, they're they're easy to use. It's safe. It's fast. It's completely legal. Um, inexpensive customer service is their top priority. You could use a money order, check, wire transfer. The rates are great too. You can uh, donate some of the fees that uh, the, you know the fees there to charity. As always, orders under forty dollars carry no fee. They want you to get into Bitcoins. So if you're willing, if you're you're just starting out and you just want to get a little bit of Bitcoin, you want to do less than forty dollars. Cool. There's no fee. Cash into coins.com. So, again, uh, acute lymphoblastic leukemia, T cell acute lymphoblastic, lymphoblastic leukemia, very rare and aggressive form of childhood leukemia, about 15 to 18% of childhood leukemia cases. This is from activistpost.com, and they're citing uh, Michaela's website, which is Brave Michaela, M Y K A Y L A.com, and an article there about her treatment. So here's a summary of her treatment from her website. This protocol is used to treat low-risk leukemia patients. It's a three to five chemotherapy drug and steroid combination that is done in five rounds, lasting two and a half to three years. The first four rounds are very intense and last for six to eight months. The last round is called maintenance. It's done mainly from home and is far less damaging than the first four rounds. Michaela began maintenance chemotherapy in February of 2013. She began her chemotherapy, period, on July 16th of 2012. Uh, Michaela's lymphoblast level was monitored daily for the first eight days and weekly or twice weekly thereafter. Her lymphoblast level would go down after receiving chemotherapy, but a few days later it would be back up and sometimes at a higher level than before the chemotherapy. The doctors were concerned. They spoke to us. This is her parents writing. 
about the possibility of Michaela having a bone marrow transplant due to the leukemia not going into remission with the chemotherapy. 95% of children with leukemia go into remission during the first 30 days of chemotherapy. The majority of them go into remission just a few days after receiving chemotherapy for the first time. The oncologist did recommend cranial radiation in Michaela's case, as she is an intermediate-risk T-cell wow. phenotype and had a very small amount of leukemia cells in her brain and spinal fluid. Using cranial radiation to treat leukemia is a topic that is already controversial between different cancer research groups. Our family felt 100% confident in denying cranial radiation for Michaela as she is in remission and has natural treatment methods that protect her from cancer and relapse. We had a plan from the very beginning to combat Michaela's Natural cancer. Natural methods that protect her from relapse? Yeah, I presume that means uh, the cannabis. They had a plan from the okay. very beginning to combat Michaela's cancer and chemotherapy naturally, and that was to use cannabis in the form of very concentrated and potent oil, raw cannabis juice, and cannabis cooked into food. Cannabis has been known to kill cancer, protect the body from the damage of chemotherapy, relieve pain and nausea, and it's a neuroprotectant and anti antioxidant. In order to use this form of treatment, Michaela had to get a recommendation from another physician and a state medical marijuana license. This took us 10 days to complete. Michaela began cannabis therapy on July 24, 2012. Instantly, instantly, she was able to eat again. That was the first benefit that we noticed. She was That's huge. She was happier. She smiled and laughed constantly. We loved it. One week after we began the oil treatment, Michaela's physicians notified us that her leukemia had vanished from her bone marrow and blood. She was in remission. Never again will I fear cancer. We found the answer. Michaela is currently six months into in the intense treatment part. This was written a while back. And has never used any pain relievers, not even Tylenol, and has only had to take anti-nausea medication a few times. So just to clarify, they didn't stop doing chemotherapy. So the chemotherapy continued on, but they believe that the cannabis has helped with making chemotherapy more acceptable less damaging if it's just body? increases her ability to eat because a lot of people who take these many drugs but chemotherapy drugs certainly specifically they, they can't eat they you know they're nauseous they can't they can't consume things if it only and I, I you know there's evidence there is evidence that doesn't mean that it's true there's evidence that cancer fights or excuse me that uh, marijuana fights cancer some cancers um, effectively very effectively but if it only allows cancer patients to eat when they otherwise cannot, that is good enough. That's going to help their body, right? It's going to help them it's beat It's huge. Yeah. I mean, if the, would you go to a doctor if you couldn't eat? And would you take a drug that they gave you, that they prescribed for you? What if that drug was leafy and green? Mm -hmm. What if a bunch of people that were paid a whole bunch of money to incarcerate young people around this country told you that that drug was bad, but you tried it and it worked for you. Would you continue to use it? Of course you would. Or you're a mindless Myrmidon. And would you be willing to use it on your children? Despite all of the scare-mongering, fear-mongering tactics out there saying that, oh, you shouldn't be using cannabis with children. In fact, they kind of I can say that, that I, I find it, you know, disturbing. I, I've got to say, I'm disturbed at the idea of giving a child marijuana, but that's because I have used it recreationally. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, I mean, just because somebody uses heroin recreationally doesn't mean that I'm not going to use it if I don't have, if I have some tremendous amount of pain. So she began her uh, treatment uh, with the chemotherapy on July 17th, 2012. She was diagnosed uh, in July, July 14th, 2012. So three days later, began chemotherapy. And then she began her cannabis oil treatment July 24th. It was after that that her the lymphoblasts went down from 5% to 3% to 0% in August, uh, August 2nd of 2012. And ever since then, she's had 0%. It was July 30th, 2012 was the very last time they found lymphoblasts in her blood smear. And the very next time they saw the oncologist, they told us Michaela was in remission. Some may say that cannabis does not cure cancer. I'm not saying the steroids and chemo didn't help, but this shows something. Proof enough for me. Some say cannabis is inappropriate for children. We say cancer is inappropriate for children. And there you if go. this can help, then why not? 
And of course, the real tragedy is that there are plenty of people, not just children, but people who have all kinds of uh, maladies. It's not just lim- uh, it's not just this uh, particular problem that is uh, is being <laughs> impossible by to this. pronounce lymphoma thing. <laughs> That uh, leukemia, um, that you know, there's not. There are all kinds of things that cannabis can help people with, and there are still 25 states or so that you can't use ca- cannabis legally. You know, those states can just stick it. As far as I'm concerned, if uh, if a loved one in my family or me, if if I had cancer, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna try marijuana mm-hmm. as a, a solution. I see no reason not to. Um, I mean, it's ridiculous. This is ridiculous. It's ridiculous that these people had to wait 10 days. 10 days their daughter to get the license, yeah. Yeah, suffered without being able to get marijuana and or supposedly we're going to assume that the the daughter in fact suffered yeah. <laughs> while they waited to get to, um, to provide her with legal marijuana. I sincerely hope these parents went ahead and did it once well, they getting, made the decision. Well, getting cannabis oil isn't an easy thing, right? I mean then that it's easy to buy marijuana on the streets, yeah. But getting the cannabis oil, I don't even know how you begin making that stuff. You yeah, I wouldn't really either. Start to learn some uh, details. There. I know there's pot butter. Eight fifty five, four fifty free, and they were doing that. They were cooking with cannabis as well. Uh, Eight fifty five, four fifty free. Still to come here tonight. Your calls about whatever's on your mind, if you make them, and also Mark's going to tell us about a welfare story coming up. It's Free Talk Live. The following is an important free offer for smokers only. The makers of Victor, the world's most advanced e-cigarette, have just authorized the release of free starter kits to all smokers who call in the next 10 minutes. Valued at $99, these Victor starter kits are available for free, but only while supplies last. To guarantee your free kit, call in the next 10 minutes, 1-800-564-6941. The revolutionary Victor design creates only water vapor. There is no foul-smelling smoke and no unhealthy tar. This allows individuals to enjoy the nicotine they love without restriction, no matter where they are. The financial advantages over cigarettes are considerable as well. It is estimated that the average smoker can save hundreds of dollars a month with Victor. Again, free Victor starter kits are now available to any smoker who calls in the next 10 minutes. This is a radio-only offer not available in stores, so call now for your free kit. 1-800-564-6941. 1-800-564-6941. 1-800-564-6941. It's already too late. Criminals have kicked in your door and are now in your home. Before this happens, homeowners have a choice. One, do nothing and hope you aren't one of the 1.4 million families attacked each year. Or two, refuse to be a victim and for as low as $59, reinforce your doors with door devils. Door devils simply attach to existing door frames and have proven to stop the biggest bad guys from kicking in doors. Read our police testimonials of real life events at doordevil.com. Alarms don't stop kick-ins, we do. Doordevil.com. How can you save a ton of money and prepare for emergencies? By having your own in-home freeze dryer from Harvest Right. Now you can cut down on wasted food by freeze drying your leftovers. That's right. Create your own long-term food storage by freeze drying your own fruits, meats, vegetables, even complete meals with the Harvest Right in-home freeze dryer. Imagine the savings and the peace of mind. See how the amazing Harvest Right freeze dryer works at HarvestRight.com. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidadi. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. 
Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click Get Notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges start a conversation with your neighbor or your doctor or your family or your school. Now there's teachers and lawyers and business executives and they all wear shiny badges and they all reject the state. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges show the world that you reject coercion and aggression and oppression by the state. Shinybadges.com What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Take control here. Toll free number 855-453-free. That's 855-450-3733. And you can join us online. Just go to freetalklive.com and enjoy the features you will find on our website we've got all kinds of stuff there and if you like the show and you like what we're doing here on free talk live you can help support free talk live by becoming a free talk live amplifier that amp money the amp stands for advertise market and promotes five bucks a month the amp money that comes in is invested into free talk live so we can get on more radio stations and so we can bring more internet listeners on board and expose new people to the ideas of freedom. Uh, there's actually a new promo that we're running, uh, which actually has uh, Glenn Jacobs in it. He's You may know him as WWE's Kane. Uh, he talks about how Free Talk Live was important in his uh, coming along through to the ideas of liberty. And we've, of course, talked to people who have found us just randomly on the radio in their local uh, radio markets by just tuning into a talk radio station. They were driving home from work and they heard Free Talk Live for the first time. They got hooked. They kept listening and discovered the ideas of liberty. The, the clip that I selected was from a listener who told us that he had never really come across these ideas before Free Talk Live and has since joined the Free State Project. And so has many since people... Uh, join the AMP program. Yeah, so many people um, kind of have these, they're proto-libertarians, right? They have these ideas that, um, you know, the parties, the two parties, they're right on some issues, they're wrong on some issues, and they, they kind of have, um, you know, some of these ideas in, in their minds that, that, that free people can solve bo- problems better than the government can. But they don't really get a lot of feedback. Um, these sure. are, these ideas aren't very pervasive. So a radio show that comes out and talks about them as plainly as Free Talk Live does, it's unique and it's very empowering. Yes, and uh, it, it's working. You know, we're bringing people on board with the ideas of freedom. But we can be more effective. Uh, but it costs money <laughs> to bring more people on board. It costs money to reach out to radio stations. It costs money to advertise online. And our new uh, project that we're working on with the AMP program, because we've we've done very, very well uh, with our fundraiser. We started it back in October, this matching fundraiser up to $950 a month. We've got six listeners that have contributed, that have pledged to match up to $950 a month. One of them month. being uh, Glenn Jacobs. One is, is Glenn Jacobs. Uh, six listeners have contributed this uh, to, to this matching fund, and it's on on a monthly basis if we can reach 950 we'll get all 950 if we're only at 700 we're going to get 700 so we're up at around i think 800 at the moment and that was more than enough to fund what our pr- first project was which was to hire daryl our friday night co-host to do affiliate relations work and affiliate relations is calling radio stations like i do during the day so we now have two people calling radio stations we're seeing more stations come on board we've got over 140 stations now just added a couple more to the list today as a matter of fact so that part's worked so we decided let's shift gears and go and do some internet focus on bringing new people to to the ideas of freedom and and what we're doing now is we're doing an adwords campaign with google so people who are searching not for liberty-oriented talk radio, not people who are already kind of on board, but people who are just kind of searching generically. But that too. Well, right, we're doing that as well. But but really, we want to want to bring new people on, uh, people who are searching generically for talk radio, just somebody who's online that wants to hear some talk radio. We want them to find Free Talk Live. We want them to discover the ideas of liberty, as you once did. Maybe it was through us, maybe it was through some other method, but these are really important ideas, and you can help us get them into more ears for five bucks a month over at amp.freetalklive.com. And your five bucks is doubled into $10 a month. 
because of our generous contributors. So please go to amp.freetalklive.com, get signed up there, and get involved in helping Free Talk Live spread the ideas of liberty. It really works, and you can help us out. Again, amp.freetalklive.com. As we go to the phones, which of course are now filling up in the very final segment of Free Talk Live. That's how it goes. It does seem to be going that way. Let's go to the phones and your thoughts. Charles is in West Virginia. You're on Free Talk Live, Charles. Yes, my daughter was diagnosed with Crohn's disease when she was 17 years old. Oh, dear. Mm. I don't know if you're familiar with Crohn's disease or not. It's uh, It's, digestive? uh, Yes. It's worse than cancer. They can cure cancer. They can't cure Crohn's disease. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry to hear that. She died when she was 36 years old from it. Awful. Sorry. And cannabis was one of the few things that she could really get any relief. Um, How, what kind of relief did she see? Uh, she could eat. Okay. She could uh, be uh, relatively pain-free. Uh, done more than all the other drugs they was cramming in her. Yeah, just imagine that uh, this drug could allow you to take in sustenance and relieve uh, much of the pain that you experience. That in and of itself is a miracle drug. Absolutely. Well, yes. It is. I don't know if I classify it as a drug or not. It's an herb. It goes yeah. all around. God made it. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't like using the term dr- drug either because drug feels like a refined thing, and, mm. and cannabis isn't. Yeah. Made somewhere in a laboratory by people for profit. Did you ever experience her using uh, the cannabis? I mean, were you there when she did it? Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> What what was that like? Because I know that in some people's case, it it's like one or two hits, and they get the the necessary medicine that they were looking for. It's not like they're sitting there chiefing on a bong or something like that. Yeah, that was it. <laughs> Just well, it depended on the grade. Yeah, some bag weed and stuff. She does smoke a joint, but some of the stuff that I could acquire, she didn't take with a couple of hits, and she was she was fine. And uh, it is not uh, is uh, is there any medical program in West Virginia? Yeah, it's stamp out cannabis and every other drug that might help. No, 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 no. Is there a, a, a medical marijuana program in in West Virginia? No, I didn't no. think so. You are a hero uh, uh, for doing that for your daughter, acquiring cannabis and uh, and helping her, you know, get this on the black market, which is what you had to do. And I thank you for that, and thank you for sharing your call and the thoughts tonight, Charles. Because there are a lot of people who, when they're diagnosed with some sort of awful malady, and somebody like a loved one comes to them and says, "Look, will you try cannabis? You know, it's, there's all this evidence. Maybe it'll help. Maybe it'll help you. Maybe it won't." But maybe it will. And you've, you know, there's all these scary medical treatments out there. Why mm-hmm. not try this? A lot of people who, and certainly older people, are afraid. That not because they're afraid necessarily of cannabis, but they're afraid of the law. They're afraid to try this medicine that could be a lifesaver, or at the very least a life extender. Uh, they're afraid to try it because they don't, you know, they, they could go to jail. And they're afraid to go and acquire it because acquiring it's probably the most risky part. Yep. So uh, that's really a, a, a sad part of that story. But um, I'm glad to hear that – well, I'm not glad to hear that she, she passed away, but I am glad to hear that it was at least more comfortable because of the cannabis. Let's continue with your calls and thoughts. Patrick's in Norfolk. Patrick, you're on Free Talk Live. Hey, hey what's going on? We're doing a radio show, Patrick. What are you doing? Oh, yeah. I love it. I love it. I love talk radio, man. Look uh – I was born and raised kind of out there in the Seattle area, and uh, I happened to turn on CNN yesterday and found out about one of them uh, KOMO, ABC affiliated uh, chopper went down with a pilot, and uh, uh, I think it was a photographer, and... uh, there's a couple of people on the ground that were hurt. Why? I think the one was in serious condition. I'm not sure, but uh, I was trying to get figure out what. What's your thoughts about it? I think it's a pilot air. Mark, do you support helicopters crashing or do you oppose them? <laughs> I'm against. I, I'm going to go on the record. I'm against helicopters crashing. Yeah, you, you know, I mean, if you're if talk you're, about an awkward moment in talk radio, though. 
if you spend enough time flying at some point or another, there's going to be a problem. Mm. Um, I'm I'm interested in seeing what the results of the uh, the 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 obvious investigation. I I just don't know. I'm I. I I, you know, it's it's a tragedy. These uh, these two radio folks. It's been big in the radio business. What's uh, what, this this news story? And mm. I've been following it, but uh, you know, at this point, there's a lot more questions than there are answers. Who knew that they actually use helicopters to do those traffic reports? I thought almost all of them were somebody coming would... into you live from <laughs> the, 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 the Spaghetti Junction I here. Mean, almost <laughs> all traffic reports have to be just somebody in a boiler drone. room calling in, and uh, you know, sound effects in the background. Go ahead, Patrick. I thought maybe it was a drone. Thanks for the call tonight, Patrick. Appreciate hearing from you. Wilt is on the line in Arizona. You're on Free Talk Live. Wilt. It's Wit. Wit. You're on the air. I I support the decriminalization of marijuana, but I'm sorry. If I may poke fun at a previous caller, I think there's somebody that was on your Free Talk Live show that might be a good uh, example of why there are Republican friends of mine that think that dope should never be legal. What are you, uh, what are you talking about? But I don't... Your previous caller. I, I Just, think he was I mean, drunk. I don't know. That last right. guy? He sounded drunk to me, sir. Right, I agree. I got I got the sound effects. But <laughs> I also think maybe that it, you should have had some bubbly sound effects as well. I've got one of those, too. Sorry, I, I would have pulled it out if I thought no it was necessary. We're out of time. Uh, we appreciate hearing from you tonight. Uh, out of time. Call <laughs> call earlier in the show if you want to get a chance to really speak to us because we're done. You guys don't have any clue whether that guy was drunk or not. He sounded pretty tipsy. He was just somebody calling into a talk show. You could barely put a sentence together. That's right. You this poor man and his speech impediment. <laughs> All right. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow night. Join us online in the meantime at freetalklive.com. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. Immigrating to the Shire was easy. I was instantly plugged into a community of individuals who also care about peace, liberty, and justice and are willing to do something about it. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. Do you love coffee as much as I love coffee? Here's a delicious way to drink the best of the best coffee and make a difference one cup at a time. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer BuzzBox Coffee. And you can try a pound for free. All you do is cover shipping. It's organic, shade-grown, top 1% Arabica grade. 10% of future purchases help our efforts to give the gift of human freedom through at least 100 microloans via World Vision. For more information, go to coffee.freetalklive.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Cap Black Radio is up next, live after the news, on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Wednesday, March 19th, 2014. Silver is trading at $20.76 per ounce. Gold is worth $1,345 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $614. Vladimir Putin redrew Russia's borders Tuesday by declaring the Crimean Peninsula part of the motherland, provoking a surge of emotions among Russians who lament the loss of empire and denunciations from Western leaders who called Putin a threat to the world. 
While Putin's action was hailed by jubilant crowds in Moscow and cities across Russia, Ukraine's new government called the Russian president a threat to the civilized world and international security, and the US and EU threatened tougher sanctions against Moscow. Vice President Joe Biden, meeting with anxious European leaders in Poland, denounced what he called nothing more than a land grab, adding, the world has seen through Russia's actions and has rejected the flawed logic. In an emotional 40-minute speech televised live from the Kremlin's chandeliered St. George Hall, Putin said the time has come to correct a historical injustice and stand up to Western pressure by incorporating Crimea, declaring, In people's hearts and minds, Crimea has always been an integral part of Russia. He dismissed Western criticism of Sunday's Crimean referendum as a manifestation of the West double standards. When you purchase gold or silver from Amagi Metals using my affiliate link, gold.fppradio.com, you help fund FPP Radio News. That's gold.fppradio.com. Antiwar.com reports, while insisting they remain committed to diplomacy in their ongoing dispute over possession of the Crimean Republic, Ukraine's interim government announced a full military mobilization preparing for war. Many in the newly installed Ukraine government see war with Russia as inevitable, and the military is digging defensive trenches along their eastern border with Russia, while officials pledge harsh crackdowns against ethnic Russians who supported the ousted elected government and have protested the new one. Interim Defense Minister Ihor Tinyuk insists that Crimea will be our territory, and that troops still deployed in Crimea will not withdraw. Russian and Ukrainian officials have announced a truce over these bases until Friday, hoping cooler heads will prevail. Yet, protest leader Vitaly Klitschko insisted that Friday won't change anything. Interim Justice Minister Pavlo Petrinky insists that between now and Friday, the army needs to be ready for combat and that the interim government's goal is to restore the military might of Ukraine. Despite the bellicose talks, Wyoming Senator John Barrasso says Interim Prime Minister Arseny Yatsenyuk told him quite a different story of a military where nothing flies, nothing shoots, and nothing works, and urged major U.S. military aid for his country. Though President Obama has pledged support for Ukraine's new government regaining control of Ukraine, so far they have stopped short of pledging military backing for a war against Russia. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Coinbase. Coinbase is a simple and secure online Bitcoin wallet for sending, receiving, and storing Bitcoin. Get started at coinbase.fppradio.com. That's coinbase.fppradio.com. South Carolina law requires political parties who want to nominate their candidates by convention get permission from opposing political parties by putting a question on the June primary ballot. The Libertarian Party was trying to comply with this new law, but the state told them to ignore the law because the state claims they cannot financially afford to comply with the law that Governor Nikki Haley signed into law last June. The State Election Commission notified the chairman of the Libertarian Party, the South Carolina State Election Commission does not have the time required to update their voter registration and election management system or the considerable financial resources to make the changes necessary to accommodate your requirements for 2014. South Carolina Libertarian Party Chairman Michael Carmany told Joshua Cook from BenSwan.com that they will hold a nominating convention, and Carmany says, I have